And we are back, Couch Company Podcast. I'm your co-host, John, with Tyler. Hey, John. How's it going, man? It's good. And happy birthday, America. That's true. Fourth yes. of July. It is Fourth of July weekend. Uh, 1776? I, that's correct. Right. Yes. Awesome. I love the Fourth of July. You get to go outside. You get to barbecue it up with your mates. It's it, supposed to be beautiful tomorrow. Is it really? Yeah. That's that's good news. Yeah, I think I'm going to grill probably like burgers. Like my family's out of town though, so I might be grilling for myself. Really? Like on Sunday? When's the holiday? Yeah, Sunday. Sunday? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we have a party tomorrow. Yeah. Partying it up. Going to Kyle's. Yeah, and then uh, Sunday is going to be recovery day, but you're, you're going to just grill for yourself. I'm just going to grill for myself. Yeah, In the dude. spirit of America's birthday. There's some things I want to do with uh, burgers. I want to try some things, so we'll see how that goes. What are you going to try? Uh, so there's like this Gordon Ramsay recipe, uh, that he does with, it's nothing crazy, but the way he like preps it and everything and, and the, uh, blend he uses, I'm going to try that. So you're doing like a special, so when I, when I think of 4th of July, I'm always like, okay, Hey, this is going to be plain ass burger. Oh yeah. American yeah. cheese. Cause yeah, it's 4th of July. For you sure, have to do American sure. cheese. Um, do you like yellow or white American? Uh, either's fine. I usually either. go with the yellow. Yeah. Yeah. It's just classic. That's All a right. classic, you know, so American cheese. Uh, I'm going to do tomato, onion if they have it. Yep. Sometimes they don't. Uh, ketchup, mustard, mayo. I'm not a condiments guy, but yeah. I mean, that's classic 4th of July. That's what it yeah, should be. Absolutely. Exactly. Like I can I can lose the, the mustard, but... See, I my like, thought like is just like, I'm going to be by myself, so why not just go for it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Have you ever had the, the peanut butter burger? No, that sounds no? awful. Oh my gosh. It's so good. So they do a piggy butter and jelly burger at Burgatory. I've right? seen that, yeah. Yeah, so they take like it's it's a burger, but it has like uh, bits of ground bacon kind of infused in it. Yeah, and then they have like the peanut butter. They have like this habanero jelly, and then all the normal Jeez. like toppings on, <laughs> yeah. a, on a hamburger. Oh, it's so delicious! It's so good. I've heard good things about it. I don't think I'd like it, but that sounds the, so weird. The secret is bread and butter pickles, which I don't typically like. I could take them or leave them, uh-huh. but for that burger, mm, it's so good. I'm not a huge pickle guy. I do like pickles on like. The Chick Fil A sandwich, though, like, those the are one good. pickle they give you, yeah, but it makes the sandwich. That's fair. Yeah. It, it is really good with that. But I, other than that, I don't like pickles. Like I'll never eat a pickle by itself. It sounds terrible. When we when we worked at McDonald's, it was always like you get two pickles, and then typically like it's going to be like the tiny little end of the pickle. What on like a Big Mac? Yeah, well, dude, they always on, give me on, like ten honestly, pickles on, on a Big anything. Mac, dude. So the thing is, if you it depends on who you get at McDonald's, but if you're right. a smart ass, like oh, well, if they're a smart ass, and you say, hey, can I have extra pickles? They'll put like, they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll put all of the the entire pickle. They'll just chop up a pickle and put it on your sandwich. <laughs> that sounds terrible. It's, it's really crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Are you doing anything? Are you family? Uh, no, no. My uh, my family is going to church. Love it <laughs> as as they do on a Sunday. As they do. Uh, my dad's helping uh, like repair a pool or something like that i, I was gonna like say like hey do you want to go to eaton park and, and go to dinner or yeah something? let's do it uh, i haven't prepared anything so th- i could throw this shit out <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean like <laughs> i haven't i haven't bought anything for that yet so uh we go to eaton park man and that's it that was it uh yeah yeah so i mean we're gonna i don't know we'll do something on like monday or something like that yeah that makes sense so i've been um really obsessed with cars lately cars so, yeah yeah real so cars I've been, like real the, cars the pixar movie uh Cars was okay. I always really loved Cars, like the Pixar movie, but I think if I were to go back and watch all the Pixar movies and create a list, it would be lower on the list. I don't think it was that good, actually. How many Pixar movies can you name? I mean, we'll get, we'll get back to your Cars. Yeah, no, no. We'll circle back. How many Pixar movies can I name? I yeah. don't know. Should I see right now? Well, I mean, so if I'm thinking about Pixar movies, like yeah. obviously you have like your Toy Stories and things like that, which yep. the more I think about it, it's like, eh, okay, the first one was fine. No, Toy Story is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, my god like, no, right. so I don't good. know I know that's one of those Toy Story would be top five easy sure I mean uh, Toy but you have Story, like Finding Nemo which is amazing I think Finding Nemo is the most overrated one wow interesting that's Dude, a very hot take talked that up like crazy to me and then I finally watched it I'm like yeah it's, it's fine yeah I, I wouldn't put it tell some, you a, single thing a lot of people it. put it as their like number one I wouldn't go that far it's it's really good though Incredibles is my number one Incredibles is incredible yeah it's very good yeah <sighs> What else is there? Wally is supposed to be. I've never seen Wally. Actually, I should really get yeah. on that. Wally's supposed to be fantastic. Um, what else is there? Uh, there's like a whole 
bunch of them. Some of them suck though. Like, did you ever see the the Good Dinosaur? That's a newer one. That's a right? newer one. No, yeah, I like never 2018. Saw it it kind of sucked. Oh, uh, Inside Out. Did you ever see that one? That one's nope. pretty interesting. Also, also newer. Yeah, but that one was good though. It was yeah, an interesting I mean, concept. I see that. That's the thing is like I. I think you just don't like Pixar movies. I think that's might well, I mean, be what it is. There's like Up. Up's, you know? up's good. That's, that's Pixar. I, like, I like the shorts more than anything, in all honesty. <laughs> the shorts, like, yeah. No, the shorts were always really good. I don't know. Anyway, tell me, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, I think Cars might be up there for me. Yeah, that's maybe. that's the one I've, I've seen the most. We should, we should do that. That sounds like some content. Rewatch. Just rewatch all the Pixar, Pixar movies? movies in chronological and order? Or we you could get Chelsea on board with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She would do it right. for sure. That's, yeah. that's like an everyone kind of thing. Yeah. And then we all see what, what our uh, rankings Just are. Just re-rank everything? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be interesting. I haven't seen them in a while, so I think things might shift based on like what I remember them. <laughs> Do the old Pixar tier, uh, tier list, but yeah, dude, everyone loves a good tier list, right? All right, so tell me about these real cars that you're. I don't know how this started. About. I think it was because I wanted to play Forza. Like I was watching E3 and I saw the Forza Horizon Five, and I was like, yeah. man, those cars look fucking nice. Now I've just found myself just watching like fucking these supercars on youtube like it's all i did at work today is this something that you want to uh like buy yourself or are you just like oh so i, just, I was I looking like at a mustang to see like if i could afford one which i could yeah <laughs> theoretically um because my I mean, li- anyone can afford it yeah right yeah, like so what's a, a what is afford really yeah mean i could pay four hundred dollars a month towards it mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. so my little brother's getting his license so <clears throat> eventually i'll probably my parents bought me the Honda that I have now, so I'll probably hand that off to him since I can afford a car on my own. So I was looking at cars. I mean, that's nice of you. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's not really mine, but yeah, yeah sure, I mean, I'll take sure. the credit. Um, so I was like, yeah, I can afford a car. I should probably just buy one. And I was like, I want a fucking Mustang, dude. I just want to. I just want to look good. I remember you, you saying that, like we were in a chat, and you're just like, oh man, I. You started looking at it like all the different colors yeah. and like racing stripes. And well, stuff I was like looking that. at like their top of the line model at first, yeah. which is the Ford Shelby GT500. That thing is fucking disgusting. It's was that like Bond's car? What's Bond's car? No, he's he, no way. He has an American car. It's probably like a yeah. I guess that's true. BMW or something, I don't right? What he had? It's got to be a. Ju- I don't it's even know be why a, I brought that up. If I don't know what he Bond's had, car? yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. trying to think. He's got something that's famous. Sure. Um. <clears throat> anyways, leave it in the comments. Uh, yelling at us, just <laughs> fucking car. <laughs> Someone's yeah. very it's the most right famous now. car ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I was looking at that one. It has like 790 horsepower or something fucking disgusting. Dude, what do you need that for? You like, don't. Well, yeah. But it's how amazing would that be? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like looking at my uh, my Elantra and having to go back to work in September. I'm like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna hang up, like hold up. Right? Yeah. So now I'm looking. It's like okay, well. I'm not ready to buy a new car. I don't want that car payment yeah. on a monthly thing. So it's like, well, do I get like a like a junker, a used car? Do I get another another Elantra? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I was walking in and I was like, yeah, I'm probably going to bring this up today. And I'm like, Tyler probably doesn't give a fuck about I, like... I wish I did, man. Good cars and stuff. Yeah, like I appreciate it, but yeah. I, I can't... I mean, so are, are all the new cars... And again, forgive me because I have no idea what I'm talking about. Are they all like automatics now? Are they still? For the is it most still part, like I was actually to be a, I was a actually shift. building my own Mustang on the site, and you can actually get manual. Like if you're building a your like a custom one, would you? Do you know how to drive stick or no? No. Yeah, I, yeah, right. I have no idea. I think it's the guy code to say you do, but I have no, I have no clue. Yeah, like, no. You public. nod your head when you know they ask the group. Yeah. But fuck. You're there's sweating like, there's, when, a, there's when like a pedal and yeah. a, a stick. There's a clutch stick, and stick yeah. shifting. <clears throat> yes, stick shifter. Those yeah. are the, yes, those are the components of a manual transmission. I think there's a steering wheel somewhere. Yeah. Um, but well, it's weird actually. The top line model doesn't. It's only manual or uh, automatic. I mean, um, but anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah, you probably wouldn't give a fuck about this, but it's an interesting thing because I want to. So I'm probably going to get Game Pass at some point, which means I can play all the Forzas, which I'm really excited right. about. Yep. Because video games is how I learn about life, which is super sad but it's true like okay i'm gonna be such a car person after playing forza because is that they actually do a really good job of like implementing showing like, everything you know, yeah real life stuff mm-hmm. you know you know engines do they do that as much on on the horizon stuff see i don't know about that yeah. because i always played the motorsport right ones which are obviously more about the racing and, and stuff like that i'd imagine they probably touch it yeah it's probably least. realistic it's just it yeah. doesn't handle as re- it's a little bit more arcadey i i, I like right, the, the horizon ones right. which means that it's probably not yeah, but I think it's still it's still Forza. 
Sure. So I'm sure it, it, it does have that stuff. But anyways, so I was thinking about that, and I know you have your keyboard ex- uh, obsession. Yeah, it's like the same thing. Right. There's well, a, there's it's a like clutch it's, in a keyboard. Dude, it's so bad, dude. I just want to like, I've been really getting into like, getting into things <laughs> sure <laughs> it makes sense <laughs> like just go all I want in. a really nice car yeah I, I love having a nice computer and stuff like that mm-hmm. and just like having the best stuff it's like you have the best computer out of all our friend group like you, you, i mean you're yeah, top of so. line i probably overpaid like insane for it too i don't know i think it's gonna last you for a while it's an alien oh wear. yeah yeah it's yeah it's right. it, i think is like it got pretty good reviews like from yeah. from what you know, people, it's not perfect, obviously, but it's, it's definitely not bad for what you're getting with it. I think the beauty with what you're getting into is, uh, once windows 11 comes out at the end of the, the year, mm-hmm. early next year, yep. um, the, uh, mm-hmm. the hard drive is going to be screaming on that thing with like Microsoft's new, like they're bringing all the Xbox stuff in yep. and they'll go, they'll, they'll fly. It'll be faster than a Mustang. Dude, that'd be sweet. Yeah, Mustangs it's, are pretty it's, fast. It's essentially the same thing. The, uh, yeah, I, I wish I liked cars. Um, I always put that equivalent, like I think cars are more practical to understand. Like, I can build a computer, right? Like, that's yeah. easy enough. I, right. I know the basic thing. Like, I should know how to not build a car from scratch, but at least I should know how to, like, fix something yeah, like in a car. Like, change your oil anything. or... Yeah, anything. Do you know how to know. change a tire? Yeah. Like, I, you can get through it like if you Like, my had dad to. sat me down when I yeah. was, like... Oh, man, I don't even know. It was, it was probably, like, 14, 15, maybe? Yeah. And he was like, okay, you're going to change a tire today. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. I... I, I think I could figure it out. Yeah. Only, like, do, do cars even come with that anymore? Now don't you just, like, shove, like, I, I don't know, like, a foam tube in, in <laughs> it, and it just, like, it just inflate, like it inflates I the tire, and it's like, here's your, tell here's you, your new tire. I don't think that's how it works, but... <laughs> I hope not. I don't, I don't <laughs> know. amazing. Yeah. That's some crazy tires. Dude, do you know that the, the Beast, you know, the president's vehicle... Is it called the Beast? Yeah, it's called the Beast. I did not know that. Okay, Isn't that so amazing? I learned, yeah, I learned something new. Um... The tires on that, I forget, like, I'm going to totally get all this wrong, but, like, right. they can get shot out or something, like, completely destroyed and still drive for, like, X number of miles or something like that, like, hmm. because it, it has, like, a, it's kind of like, uh, I believe it's, like, 18-wheelers. You know how they have, like, extra treads, like, put yeah, like on? like, layers of it. Yeah. I, my, my car actually got hit by, by extra tread today. Oh, really? Yeah. I was driving, uh, like, near McKnight. Dude, those things should not be legal, by the way. I mean, don't they need that? No. Oh, okay. It makes it more efficient, for sure. Oh, uh, okay. So because just, they can just fucking drive for miles and miles without yeah. having to it's like a change snake, the tires just, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're driving behind one of these things, and the fucking tire yeah. comes out of you. Like, that's dangerous. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, it. It. I swerved. Yeah, did so, you miss it? Or did uh, it come no, off, it, or is it just on the road? Uh, what, Like, what do you mean? So it flew off of the truck. Oh, it, it flew off yeah, of yeah. the truck, yeah. And it hit like my like, like my right side. So I, it hit me, but yeah. I don't know. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. I was watching a video and uh, they were on the Autobahn in Germany and the dude <laughs> ran into this other dude at like 180 or something. That's but he crazy. just swiped him, like just barely, bro. And he just went flying. So the dude was in the left lane going like 160 and some guy wasn't looking and was changing over, which is like, just your worst nightmare, you know what right, I mean, when right. you're going that fast. So he like goes to the left, but he's right next to the barrier, so he just barely scrapes this guy. But that speed, I would assume that it would just completely wreck you. No. So it was he just so kept clean, going. yeah. Was, was, oh, he kept man. going, and then he could pull over. That's what I was, I was like astonished about there, how little damage there was. Like it, his mirror was gone. Right. But like there was just a scratch ah, on the car. If you're on the Autobahn, you don't need, you don't need a you mirror. You don't need a mirror, no, yeah. no, absolutely. Are there places to pull over then? Yeah, I think so. That's what it looked like in the video. I mean, it was a 30-second video. It was a dash cam. Yeah, you, so. you hear about that. Stuff. It's just like unlimited, right? Like you just go as fast as you can. Yeah, I believe so. That's nuts. Dude, I, would, I always wanted to do that. That sounds oh, fucking fantastic. That sounds scary as hell. Yeah, but who cares? Yeah, I guess that's true. I drive like a grandma. I don't I That's don't what I'm saying. Chances. Like You're absolutely the opposite of probably Dude, I am, every I am philosophy all I have. I defense all day. Like That's all I do. Yeah, no, I mean. Turtle up. It's the safe way. To, it's the right That's way. To my do motto. Things, right? like, yeah. <laughs> just, well, you're terrified of death, dude. I am terrified of death. I I'm not. Uh, death is liberating. Think about death? every what. Yeah, dude. Okay, so let's say I'm going 160 on the autobahn, sure. and I just get taken out. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, it's like, well, <laughs> you know, that's it. That's terrifying. I don't have to worry about that's, anything. No, that's that's ridiculous. You do, you you don't have to worry about anything anymore. I mean, like it's like. If okay, I fail, so you're if saying, I get so anxiety over a test, yeah, 
and I fail the test, there's okay. repercussions for that. Right. Like I'm going to have to do summer school or my parents are going to yell at me or something. So you're saying, I guess the repercussion of it though, like it's so, not for you. So it's like for are, other you, people. are you going in and like deleting all of your, all of your pornography and, and stuff like that then? Tyler, I'm a you young go, lad. Like, oh, you it's all, it's, it's, already, on, yeah. okay. it's already on there, bro. It's on the cloud. <laughs> it's on the internet. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I guess that's fair. I don't know. Like, I mean, so you have no regrets. But like, even you, you even go, if I did have a huge stash of porn, why do I fucking care? Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. At that point. <laughs> sure, I, I guess it's like your legacy or your people looking at you. Oh, my legacy is not fantastic. Okay. Tyler, <laughs> right. I mean. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'm yeah, I'm terrified of death. I don't want to uh, to ever die. Like I would if I don't could put wrong, my consciousness not, in a computer. That's 100%, crazy. I would do that. It is so insane. Yeah, I, right I totally disagree. But I will say it's not like I want to die or anything. Yeah. Like. Yeah, I'll I'll be scared if like something crazy's going on, but I'm I mean not. I know we I know we got in the hard dark uh, yeah <laughs> dark corner here, geez, but yeah. geez. Uh, but I'm not gonna be like super fearful of that everything needs to come to an end, dude. I mean, sure, like um, <clears throat> I, I don't know, like my my thing is if so, do you? I mean, when we talk about like legacies and uh, like, do you want kids? <laughs> um. I'm kind of back and forth. I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. So you, you like, want kids, right? I do. I do. I don't. I don't know um, when. <laughs> and, and whenever I talk to my my father, he's always like, "Yeah, you're never gonna be ready. You just yeah, need, right. you just need no, to do it. And absolutely. You'll, you'll figure it out, it's literally a band aid scenario. You got to just pull the trigger. But that's the thing. Like, I, I and not to get super, not to get super deep or, or heavy with this stuff. But it's like, okay, so I, I'm I'm looking at kind of what I'm doing, right? I'm, I'm I, like today. I just sat here. I had today off. I'm building a keyboard. Yep. It's relaxing. It's nice. We're doing this podcast. We're going to stream Grandia later. Yep. And it's like, okay, well, that's that's, that's what we're doing. Like, yeah. And uh, I've, I've been super, and I don't think I've talked about Inside yet by Bill Burnham. Have you watched that yet? No. No? You've talked about it a little bit. Yeah. I got I got really into that. Like, I, I bought yeah. his album. I've been streaming on Spotify all yeah, this Yeah, you're stuff. a big fan of that. But he's talking about, like, how, you know, his grandfather at 27 was, like, in Vietnam. Yeah, <laughs> doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And meanwhile, me, I'm just like, well, I guess I'm not really <laughs> dude, doing anything, dude. Uh, like, I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I mean, why do you why do you think I wanted to be a cop? Sure, but like, uh, like but that's, that's that's noble, I guess. Like, no one cares about like a graphic designer of like like I'm not I'm not no. like Saul Bass or someone like changing no. everything. You know, I, it is funny you say that because I did actually have a dream the other day that we made our RPG. Yeah, and it was like our legacy, like. That was what we were known for. It was. It's weird because it was literally pretty much exactly like this. Whereas, like, maybe this wasn't the best game ever made, but it enough people played it or something. It was like some maybe it was a funeral or something. It was like some sort of speech. Yeah. And it, the gist of it was like, you know, this like inspired someone to do something that they really loved and it made something great or something like that. So right. it, it made an impact or something like that. That was interesting. What, what metric would you consider? A success with like the RPG, like so you like it, would it be something where uh, the character is so good that people start like cosplaying as a character, or they start like you know if you have like good dialogue or good quotes, if if they started quoting some things, so like when Dude, I, you're thinking way, but I just want to be proud of what I did. Well, honestly. that's what I mean. I don't like, expect anyone to really play. What it. what makes you proud of it? I guess would be my question. Is like just you know, the quality of it, like um, something that I would enjoy to sit down and play. Like I yeah. would actually, now it's going to be hard to like disassociate myself with that's, that's working my on everything. Question, yeah. Right? Like so, if, if you put all your heart and soul into it, and this is why even, it's, it sucks with like when we're talking about like, Oh, is this game good or bad or yeah. whatever? Imagine you were the one that was making exactly. that game. Like yeah. it's so tough to be like, Oh, so it sucks. I guess maybe I can amend that to like, you know, cause I'm sure our friends will play it just out of the right courtesy of us. Yeah, maybe. Time, I, like, right? I don't know. I mean, I, I think mean, Nate will play it. Right. He for m- sure, he might play the opening. That's we'll what I'm see. saying. So sure. it'll be a success if Nate finished the game. I got gotcha. you. Something okay. like that. So then it would be like the, you know the approval I mean? of like the friend group. It would be like yeah, the right. Like if stuff. I could get Nate, yeah, to actually play through the game, the whole game, you know, without us prompting him to, right? That would be a huge success, actually. That'd be in fun. my mind. Uh, yeah, I mean, like it's one of those things. Like, I think if we could get one stranger. To play our game, yeah, right. And we get one any, stranger any, to listen to our podcast, yeah, any, dude. Oh, dude. Hey, we got we got someone from Germany. The one time, twice, twice. It was last time we too. did. You know, it might be in the algorithm. We were mentioning the Audubon. And it might be like that. You know, <laughs> that might be. It's it's uh, like a pre. I don't know, like a 
premonition type of thing. Like we, well, they're going to hate us after how little we know about cars. Yeah, I don't know anything about cars. I'm sorry. Because the Germans love cars. The Germans like everything. They they, they engineer everything perfect. I mean, keyboards. Like the, the German key keyboards? Are, yeah. Well, it's not even the keyboards. It's like, although DOS keyboard is a thing yeah. in Germany. It's very good. Dude, they make everything, man. Well, um, they make everything well. Very, like, I, I can appreciate, like, the precision and everything. Like, the, the yeah. top of the line keycaps, which aren't even, like, I guess, good to type on. I mean, they're fine to type on, but sure. like, it's all, like, just I mean, looks. what is it? Oh, so it's just aesthetic, really? Is it that really what? is, yeah. And okay. it's, it's the, the rarity of it, where, like, okay, you, you know that only a handful of people have this set, you know, knockoffs aside or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, here you go. You paid so it's just the rarity. $160 you for You know what I think about today? So I watch um, the Angry Joe Show. You know, yeah. know that mm-hmm. guy? Yeah. Sure. So he, he has like this ongoing meme recently where it's like Valorant had like a blue skin that was like really expensive. It was like 60 bucks or something. Okay. So he was like paying 60 bucks for blue or something like that. And so he's like in mad. <laughs> and then I guess I saw the video on my feed today. It was like Apex kind of did the same thing. It was like 50 bucks for blue. Dude, I was a- like, Apex is extremely expensive but go on yeah yeah no i'm sure all those games are i mean apex is free as well right or uh it is yeah yeah exactly dude i don't have a problem with that if the game's free who cares if the cosmetics are really yeah i mean if you if you you don't need them if you want to have them like go for it so anyways i was like if we ever made a game like that like a shooter or something i would make like a blue skin just straight blue just as like a meme but like five hundred (laughs) dollars You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't even look special. No particles. Yeah. It's just like, if you want to just show off that you spent $500 would, would on this Would that game, be the specialness of it? Is there exactly. zero particles? Isn't that, be, isn't that brilliant? Yeah. That's, or am that's I just a dumbass? Uh, no. I, well, yes. I think you're a dumbass for, for <laughs> putting that out there. But are you the dumbass or is the person that buys that more of the... Like, is he the though? Because he's going to be the only one with the skin. If you if you like it, if you enjoy it, by all means. I mean, you know there's going to be just, some streamer out there that's yeah. like, hey guys, you want to yeah, see right? this thing? XQC like, is going to buy that skin because he fucking can. Right. And it's like, how awesome is that when you get killed or you kill someone and then you pick up their $500 gun? Like, <laughs> yo, dude, look at this. <laughs> well, that's why I never bought anything in Valorant is because every time like Nate or someone died, I just picked yeah. up their gun and right, exactly. it and I had it. No, absolutely. I, didn't, I never bought anything in Valorant either just because I didn't put enough time into it. But... Uh, it would just be funny because like you're <laughs> expecting something amazing, but right. it's just like, just, and it has to be like a crazy amount, like five hundred thousand dollars skin or something. Five hundred thousand, <laughs> not five hundred thousand, five hundred or a thousand dollars skin. Like at that like point, that. you need the gun like named after you. Yeah, or if something. it's a thousand, yeah, I would love. I would to do, do a five hundred dollar blue skin. Would you do so for for our game? Would you do something with like stretch goals and things like that? Like if you if you threw it out there, just like okay, hey, here here are the well, like a GoFundMe or something, yeah, yeah, it doesn't hurt. Would that be something? Yeah, <clears throat> that'd be interesting to think. We'd of. We'd have like, to actually. I guess it would force us to actually do something. It would, yeah, we would <laughs> have, like that would be that'd be a lot of pressure. We we would need something on paper because with those kind of things like that, you have these goal markers, so you need to have some sort of product out that they can see. Right. It, it scared me a little bit because I I did so I ended up buying on the Steam sale. Steam sale is still going on for I think a week now. Yeah. Um. So. Go check that out. Uh, but I, I did get RPG Maker. I started uh, messing around with it. I also got a Pixel. So my my Pixel program was on an iPad. I sold my iPad. I completely forgot about it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, now that I want to do pixel art, I don't have anything. Um, and I stopped using Photoshop. So I, I got this thing called uh, A-Sprite, which is great program. But uh, when I started looking at the RPG Maker, for whatever reason, I thought it was 16 by 16. We talked about this a little bit where I'm like, oh, okay, not a problem. I can design in that. Like, it's super easy. Yeah. I like that small thing. Well, it's actually like RPG Maker's 48 by 48, which is like, yeah. instead of 256 pixels, it's 10 times that, like yeah. 2300 or something. And I don't even know where to start. Like, if we're talking about things like um, like growth in, in us, like learning how to code and learning how to do like yeah. writing and, and things like that, I got to relearn like art, which is, is extremely <laughs> embarrassing for me to to admit. But like, well, oh it, at least it's something that you're familiar with, right? Yeah, I guess I know so like principles of it. You're, you're in the like realm that, of but. yeah. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be easier for you to pick that up than for us to learn how to code. Just like code. that seems. I don't know, man. I, I actually kind of enjoyed a lot of the, the, coding, the coding stuff. Stuff so that's far. good because yeah. I haven't I haven't seen it at all. So that's that's gonna be uh, super super interesting. I, I sent you, um, which I don't know if if anyone <laughs> listening cares. But I sent you over like a Miro link last night. It like I apologize. It's like it was, one. It yeah. was like one in the <laughs> Sorry, morning, I like, and I was like, "Oh, oh okay. yeah, you have, to, you have work tomorrow." Whoops. <laughs> um, but uh, so 
that's like a like a virtual whiteboard and things like yeah, that. I know yeah, we right. talked about wanting to put everything on like a real whiteboard. Yep. Um, but man, I think there's there's going to be some kind of middle ground there where like, yeah, we can't always be. Yeah, in it's the same it's room. really cool. Like I, I started like messing around with it and started putting like notes down and ideas, and I just wanted to like put something on like it, and it's crazy yep. how I only did it for maybe ten minutes, like maybe. Yeah. And it's just like. Sticky notes, sticky notes, and I just yeah. like the the idea started really flying. Yeah. So it's like can, if we can do that just by ourselves, I can't even imagine how much fun it's going to be whenever we're like on Discord or something and just start like throwing yeah, just, off like all the because you can like draw lines to each other and stuff. Yeah. So it's like okay, hey, we we came up with this character and now you draw a line. It's like okay, well, what's the relationship between these guys? And, right. and oh, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be interesting. I think a huge aspect of that is, and I've been you know obviously thinking about the game, but. We want to prioritize, you know, story. It's going to be like story driven, dialogue sure. focused, relationship focused. A visual novel. <laughs> it's going to be a visual <laughs> novel with some combat elements. Um, so a lot of those threads and like the dialogue is going to be like a web, right? Because it's going to be very cause and effect. Yeah. So that, I mean, it's going to be so insane to try to keep track of all that. That's I, kind of what I'm worried about is yeah. to keep that, you know, feasible. Like I, I think part of it is if we can flesh out the characters so well that we understand personalities, motivations, way they would talk, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be necessarily scientific. Like I, I know my the one side of my brain is always like, okay, well then you have to put them in this category. We have to assign a number to each thing, and the yeah, we don't, we don't need any of that. But if if we can get kind of like the the basic gist down, I think a lot of that dialogue. I'm hoping a lot of that dialogue will come. A little bit natural, like more naturally, right? Um, yeah, I think it, we'll see. Yeah, I think it will. I I'm talking about more the technical aspect of like because you have to program all these things in. They they do make um, some like plugins and, and things like that that we could actually. There's like a separate program specifically for dialogue trees. So like if X happens, mm-hmm. trigger Y. Yeah, yeah. So what we can do is we can um, basically kind of write all that stuff export into a file for RPG yeah. Maker and it should be okay. That's cool. Yeah. We need to sit down a day and we just need to play around with it. Oh yeah, yeah. no, for sure. Like I, 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 again, that's, I think we need to start with characters, start with the overarching, like, okay, what is this small village called? And, yep. and just build out from there. Um, I can't wait. I think that the, the biggest thing is we're going to put so much uh, like love and energy into every one of these characters and be like, Okay, is this a party member? Is it one of those? Yeah, right, yeah. Party we're, we're, it's, it's, making cuts is going to be the hardest part. This librarian is sick. Yeah. Is he, is he going to be in the yeah, party? Like, yeah, we yeah. have to we have to cut it at some point. <laughs> yeah, that, or, I definitely could see that happening. Yeah, or or you don't, and it's just you, like the well, combat's a little bit more generic, but the characters are so well done. Like, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, well, you have to think about it. If every character is a party member, see, for me, I want every party member to have a lot of depth to them potentially. Sure. So not even like, cause you know, they don't all have to be like crazy characters. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's nothing wrong with having a very simple character. Um, but I want them to have their own stuff. So let me ask you this. So I, I know like you think about like mass effect and, and stuff like that, uh, which you know, you have to check that box. Yeah. Off. I was about to yeah, ding, okay, but ding. we still have a bell. Uh, <laughs> the, so when you think about mass effect and you think about like the party that you have, um, I'm typically the person that like I'll use the same characters for everything except yep. when I need to do like their personal missions or whatever and you you bring certain people. Right, in. exactly. Do you think it makes more sense to have these um characters not necessarily exactly like uh like a Final Fantasy thing where you're you're locked into okay, well this character is definitely in your party and you have to do XYZ. But do you think having like this rotating cast where maybe your your character pool is much larger but um they're not like the entire like they're not gonna be in your party the entire time so it's like you you do this side quest but this guy is like with you for maybe who knows like maybe the entire side quest maybe you can keep them on and stuff like that but like does it make more sense to rotate guys out it's or, very D D esque right yeah like it, it's you tough. just have npcs kind of i right. mean they would you'd be able to control them obviously but mm-hmm. you know in in D D you have your main party who's going to always be there. And then obviously as you're doing different things in the world, you're going to have different people join you along the way. So yeah, that's definitely one way you can go about it. Um, 
it's just, I guess, like it takes away from, like, I, I think the way to build out, like, oh, I like this character is the more interaction you have right. with them, the the, the more so you like them. I so. will say, like, as opposed to Mass Effect, and I've talked about this a little bit in my most recent playthrough, there's like a guide that I'm using to bring different characters on based yeah. off how much dialogue they have in each mission. Mm -hmm. So that's actually been really fun. But in this, it depends how we do things from a technical standpoint. I would love like I said earlier, like a Final Fantasy X style combat system where your whole party's always with you and you swap them in and out. So maybe you only have like three people on the battlefield or whatever, but everyone's there and you can swap them in and out. Right. So what that would mean is if there's like dialogue options or whatever, they're always going to be there. So, if, you know, someone has something really important to say at a certain moment, they would, you would, they would be there to say it. You're not missing out on anything. Mm -hmm. um, logistically, that's tough. And also from a story perspective as well, because if you're just rolling around with 15 people, it's like kind of hard, you know, to do that. So I do have a couple of ideas where you could do that. Like if you do have a big group of people finding a way to implement you grouping the, uh, breaking the group up for like narrative purposes. If you have two things you're sure. trying to do or... I don't know. It really depends on, on what's going on. Yeah, I mean, like, the thing that scares me is if, if we go and we talk and, like, let's say we're talking to, like, some, like, boss and, like, big bad guy or something. Yep. And it's, like, you know, it, it, do you try to solve for every single person in your party? Like, do they all say essentially the same thing? Do they all have their own different... Like, I would hope that, um, especially if you're talking to, like, a, a bigger named character or something like that, every character in your group has a motivation that they're wanting to be yeah with they the, the should be there for a like reason that. right so right so then to to take that and then to put a priority on that mm. where it's just like does it is every person in your like your whatever party you picked it's each of them have something well you gotta you gotta like think about it it's so like crazy if you have 10 people are we yeah. just gonna go down the line and everyone's like oh fuck you no fuck you yeah well that's, <laughs> that's what i mean like I, I agree with you i think having your entire party makes sense um but yeah, from a programming standpoint, it's gonna be it's, it's gonna, gonna be a nuts. nightmare. It's, yeah, I'll be all right. We'll figure it it's out. It's gonna be tough to see what we're gonna do logistically and from a narrative sense as well. Like you have this big group, yeah, walking around. So you you might have to limit that. I don't know. We'll have to see. I would love to have a huge party. So do you think um, as we're as we're kind of fleshing this stuff out? Like mm -hmm. I know that you you want like you know for instance like Nate to play through the entire thing, right? And like that that, that would that's be a success. A, that's a goal for me yeah we we know roughly what nate likes because he'll drop it if he doesn't like it right but do you do we start cater knowing that in the back of your mind do you start like catering i don't think you can him? cater to nate you don't think? Okay. no every time you think you know what he likes he just changes it, it up yeah sure yeah i don't know like i that that's the thing is i know we want to play something that we want to play i'm very curious I think, to see how many people i think we do what we want us. yeah you know obviously you got to take considerations in sure but you shouldn't cater to one specific person, definitely. Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm I just I'm I excited. hope the quality is good enough where it'll keep his attention. I think he'll find it interesting. I think once we cause like tonight when we start Grandia Two, which I again I cannot tell you hey, how excited. Grandia two I am. tonight on Twitch. Eight PM Eastern. Eight PM Eastern yeah. time, yeah. Check uh, us out. This is gonna be out after that. This is gonna be so out after that. Catch you the can, VOD. You can, you, hopefully we can get the VOD to work. <laughs> we'll yeah, see. we're gonna see. Uh, I put it on Twitter, like so we got a couple couple likes on that one. So the thing on with, the Couch Company Twitter, no, on mine. Uh, we don't really have anyone on Couch Company. I did. Go follow us on Couch Company Pod on Couch Company Twitter. Pod yeah, at Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, yeah, that is our handle. Um, what was I gonna say? I think that playing Grandia two and jumping into those characters again, I think that's gonna really spur us to just start. Yeah, no, that's exactly. I mean, that's kind of the philosophy behind some of this stuff where we play through things yeah. and it just sparks our imagination and, and our creativity um, to start making those things. So I'm really curious because this is, this is from your childhood. It is this childhood, is, right? Or yeah. I mean, whenever uh, I forget when dreamcast came out, but yeah, early two thousands sounds right. Yeah. Sure. So that will be really cool for, for you. I know when we were playing through final fantasy, I was definitely thinking the same things like, what do I like from this? And it's really interesting because since you never played it before, you were getting kind of a new perspective on it from from my point of view. Yeah. Where it's like, oh yeah, this feels really bad. Like because I was just in love with it, so I forgave a lot of things that were wrong with it, right? So right. it was good to hear some of that feedback. 
Um, but that's what we have to do. We definitely. That's why I really want to play through Divinity again mm-hmm. because even though you didn't like your experience with that game, it's heralded as one of the best. Yeah, I you mean, know, like, does, does the Divinity, do like, is it because of all the different systems that are happening at the same time? Because the thing is, like, as, as I'm looking at these different games and, and kind of cherry-picking what I like about different mm-hmm. things, you know, kind of it is almost research to, okay, how are we going to create, like, our game? Like, some of the right. things is, like, you know, are we going to have too much dialogue? Is it going to be too yeah. heavy on that stuff? So I think that it's it's level setting with the player. Not if it's player. a visual novel. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, like, <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, everything that we love to do is... Uh, like narrative, not, yeah. that, not that we're either of us. Well, writers, it's interesting but... because I know you were talking up Grandia 2's combat system quite a bit. Yeah. So I think maybe once we get into that a little bit more, it'll kind of get that spark going for a, a fun combat system. That, but that, that's even more terrifying because it's like, okay, well now you have to go against what the, the system is in RPG maker. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's sure. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I haven't looked at it. Maybe it's impossible, but I mean, nothing, I mean it's not impossible, impossible, but right? yeah. if we could figure out something that we really like because we have the benefit of seeing all that's come before us, right? We sure. can stand top the shoulders of, of the giants that came before us. So we can take the things we like. We can scrap the things we don't like about other yeah. things and, and mix. That's the beauty of it, right? Like sure. I love... Like I said previously, Final Fantasy X's combat system. I think it's really, really well done. You feel like your whole party's involved. You can uh, do a lot of combos and things because you have that, that those kind of options. Mm-hmm. And it's your classic turn base as well, um, You know, which some people might like more than the ATB gauge of like Final Fantasy VII, right? Sure. Where it's more timed, you know, you're more on the clock. I mean, I know that's what I prefer, right? Like I right. prefer like, okay, give me a second to pause it and see you know, my move, you know, almost like a chess match type of thing. I mean, how hard does it get if we get into the territory of like, you know, you, it's an option. Uh, I mean, you're basically just doubling the, yeah. <laughs> the problem well, with it. Well, if it's, if the, like classic is one option, that's already implemented in RPG Maker. It is. Well, RPG Maker has both. I think that from oh, a system it? level, you have to pick if it's a stop or continuous like, okay. time. I think mm-hmm. what would be really cool is if you did something where the bosses are active time to just make it a little bit more, um, you know, like like pressing and a little bit yeah. more just like kind of like the, your nerves are going, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that, that could be interesting. But like regular battles are just... Yeah, I mean, they, you can do whatever you want. I mean, they, they have uh, like plugins from RPG Maker that you can just auto battle if you really wanted to. Yeah, uh, I mean, cool. so... I guess one of the things I don't like about turn-based games is like when you have all the time in the world, there isn't, like you said, there isn't really any pressure or anything like that. Uh-huh. Uh, it seems like you're rolling the dice more than strat. I mean, you are strategizing, but if sure. you get all day to do it, you know, you're obviously going to find the the best way to do it. You know. Yeah, but I, I think that that. I mean, again, that this is very subjective, right? So, like, if you're more into the active battle where you're you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna just kind of like, okay, I'm running out of time. I have to hit something. Here you go, type yeah. of thing. Um, me and my my gameplay, like, I would prefer taking an extra second, understanding the strategy behind it, and like making these these moves that I think are like these aha moves, yeah, right? Right. And I, I think Grandia will give you that sense where you know it is very much you see a timeline, you see where every, everyone is. Yeah. But you have so many different options um, that, like, you know, in in Final Fantasy VII, it was always just just keep hitting them, just keep hitting them. That's all. Yeah, right. Like it, it doesn't. Yeah, I, I, I never felt like super okay. I have to stun these guys, or I have to, uh, you know, use haste. Like yeah. I, I use that stuff, but either when you guys told me to, or I just random, randomly remember. Yeah. See, that's an interesting thing. So Final Fantasy VII was pretty easy. There wasn't any um, difficulty mode. I was actually surprised. Yeah, like, I mean... I well, got it was, it was pretty, marketed pretty well. towards younger people, I believe. Which is so, insane to me, but go yeah, on. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. you think about, like, kind of the con- uh, the content. Um, but I maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I mean, I, that was the, their first big, like, launch in the West. That, that really brought, like, the JRPG to the West. Yeah. So maybe it wasn't younger kids. I would think so because it's like PlayStation 1. So um, anyways, regardless, uh, what was I going to – that totally <laughs> threw me off. 
Fuck. All right, you go. <laughs> <I'm out. laughs> okay, I go. Uh, totally I mean, lost it. It'll no, come back. Like to I me. said, I I think that once you see the combat, I think you'll. I mean, you'll either love it or hate it, right? Like I like seeing. Okay, I I'm, totally remember what I was going to okay, say. Okay, good, good, right, good, good, good. Yeah, go, ahead, so go for it. Divinity. Yep. Back to Divinity. So this is what Divinity does really well. Yeah. Is status effects, um, things of that nature, like playing around with the environment, specific spells to do specific yeah. things. I think that's one of the reasons the combat is regarded very highly in that game uh, because element stuff is like really important. You know, uh, one of your teammates can make it rain. The other guy can cast lightning and stun everyone, right? That's a combo. But divinity being a, like it pauses like between. Yes, it's turn. It's turn. It's a, it's an interesting one because it's uh, I guess like 3d and Mm -hmm. turn based and um, yeah, but yeah, that one does pause. But I do like that because it feels like a strategy game at that point. Sure. It's like, oh, Tyler, you you can make it rain. I can stun these guys. Um, you know, things like that. You it's, know, can anyone the, can anyone make poison up, yeah. on the ground so I can use a fireball and blow it up? Like, I love right. the the combo aspect of that. Um, it's also kind of interesting how they do like defense, where you have like an armor defense and a magic defense, two different bars. That kind of gets annoying, actually, because um, it kind of forces you to all be like mages or all be um, melee, not melee, but like physical damage. Yeah. Because like if I'm one mage and we have three physical guys, I'm going to be the only one doing damage to his magic armor. Mm-hmm. Um, so that feels really bad. Like I'll never do any damage. Now, is that something where you can, and, and forgive me because I haven't played Divinity in a while, yeah. Uh, like I, I'm pretty sure you can like you can run away from from stuff too, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, is that something where you run away and respec? And because I think you can respec without penalty too. No, you, no. you can't respec. Oh, okay, you get to a certain point in the game where you can respec for free. I think once you get like your ship or something, which is after the first act of the game. So no, you can't. Oh, you can't really okay. respec. I wonder yeah. if Nate just brought me in, like. He probably did, yeah. yeah he probably like, hey, brought totally, you in. Keep, play, keep playing. Like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, you would probably like that more. But I really, it's a really good game. I mean, you just think about, I know you hate Fort Joy. I but do. Th- this has to be one of the best opening areas I, I've I ever seen. I appreciate everything about yeah. it. Don't get me wrong. I, I think it's fantastic. I think the main thing with that is it's always like we're all playing our own game ish until we're not and we just happen to be in yeah. the same combat or something like that like I, I think if it was a little bit more tight knit um they they had like a rock paper scissors thing where if, yes. if people were competing on on things um you could play a, essentially rock paper scissors and, and whoever wins wins out like yeah they needed to keep that in there they needed exactly. to keep like the the continuity between like you know if you guys are talking to somebody like i should just be brought in like i i want it to be a, a cohesive group experience yeah, right versus just everyone can just run off and do whatever the heck they want like one yeah. person can go sneak and pickpocket and do different things yeah. and that's the stuff that kind of that gets to me where I, I just feel like you need you need a more team and and that's what based, star like wars did really well yeah absolutely where you start a conversation it waits till everyone's in the conversation mm-hmm. and then you roll for every dialogue option and then the person who wins says what they're going to say. Yeah, it pulled me into that so much more yeah. than just trying to get into a conversation that somebody else was already having that I was just essentially eavesdropping on. Now, imagine if that wasn't a MOBA. Sure. And, you know, that mission that we love so much was like the game. Right. You know, but it was just a story. Yeah. That would be so much better. I mean, there was nothing better. I was playing a bounty hunter, I think. When I win my role and I say something real cool... <laughs> about I don't give a fuck about you guys. I just want paid or something like that. Right. Like that's the those are the best moments when your character stands out. When you're the expert on something. Like yeah, you know if you're a rogue, you should put your input on how to pickpocket that guy or how to unlock that door or whatever. Absolutely, and it should be it should be weighted on that thing, which I understand is like going to be like way harder to kind of predict and, and see that stuff. Because right. like if you have high charisma, it shouldn't be just you get to talk every time, right? Like that. Yes, so exactly. It, and Star Wars didn't thing. do that, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's certainly something where if you have expertise in the field or something like that, like if if other players could just there should be a give there should be an the option to skip or something. Right? Yeah. There exactly. should be like an option to skip. Yep. And then it's like, oh, I have an expertise, this guy. So you guys just skip. Yeah. 
boom, he says his thing, you get like a bonus. It would be funny too to be like to have like a voting system or something like that where you vote on the player you want to respond to the question to. Or it's, it's that would get a little complicated, yeah. Or if somebody says like, okay, hey, you know, does this thief live or die or something, and just everyone votes. Well, that's what they did in Star Wars. Like there would be the consequential decisions. Now those were just like light and dark. Mm -hmm. But 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 instead of having light or dark based off of an individual thing, like if if you're playing this game as a as a group as a co op thing in Divinity, you are you are playing in a in a single uh, like save file. It's not like each person has their own characters that you're bringing in. Exactly. At that point, you should have this this group morality. They like if you're part of this group, you have to like tough like that right. talk to talk to them you know like that's that's the thing yeah. is like talk to each other no, that's, and, and that's what i'm saying to... so there could be something like let's just go back to how the system's put in place where there's a light or dark thing mm-hmm. and you have four people in your group and three of them pick the dark path to kill the person and then one yeah. person picks the light there should be beef after that we're yeah. you're, we're now having a dialogue conversation like why the hell did you do that or you know like i'm upset that you killed them yeah something which, like that. which gets into the the D D territory right because like at the end of the day like a lot of you know, ideas that I have for like our game and, and things like that are all coming from experiences we had playing. Dungeons well, there's and a Dragons. reason a lot like, of RPGs try to, I mean, Baldur's Gate three is coming out. Yeah. It, what are they trying to do? They're trying to put D and D in a game, which is incredibly difficult. And I, I don't yeah. like it. No one's ever been able to do it. Yeah. Like D and D, like it's not so much doing what you want to do. Like D&D is all about doing whatever you want to do and just the the dungeon master's roles with it. No yeah. game will ever be able to you know actually realize that fantasy. Yeah. No matter how much it's, they try and like Divinity is great and like they give you a lot of options and things but you're still right. within their rules, their system yeah. and you can't break them yeah. more or less. It's like I kind of picture like a good metaphor would be nothing is like drawing on a piece of paper. Sure. Like yeah, we have a lot of programs now where you, we can literally draw on tablets mm-hmm. and it feels really close. But I can do an infinite amount of things on paper. You know what I mean? I can shade. I can do whatever. I can crumple the piece of paper up and throw it. Right. You know what I mean? You can't do that on iPad. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a great example, right? You, you'll never yeah. recreate that on a, a program. So sure. it's like we can get close. I'm sure we can get real close. But it'll never be the same. And I think it's the same kind of thing with D&D and you know, RPGs. Yeah, and it's getting out of that mindset of, okay, this this vast open world type of thing. It's it's drawing on those characters, the situations, and, and whatever. But then it's putting our spin on them. And you're essentially just telling a story. That's all it yeah. is. And, and I think that's the daunting yet interesting part where instead of, you know, we, we both have, have DM'd games and stuff, yeah. right? Where you're like, okay, I have to just roll with whatever these, these guys are, are yeah. wanting to do. With us uh, making a game, it's like no, this this is we're we're taking your hand and we're yeah, just leading is. you on, and I think that's kind of almost refreshing in a way because however daunting all that stuff is to come up with a good story and characters and things like that, at the end of the day, it's like, but we can still like we're the ones that are are dictating that like yeah. we we don't have that extra layer of what if the character just walks out a door and never talks to this guy, right? Yeah, like we can we can kind of put those those barriers in those games. Yeah, if we need them to do something, right? Yeah. And and that's gonna be the tough thing. Like we're gonna theoretically put a lot of content into this game. Yeah. And then you realize that a lot of people might never do X or Y, which you think is really cool, you know. Like we talked yeah. about the one bartender who has like twelve pages of dialogue. It's like, what if everyone misses that, you know? Well, I think that's part of it is like how how much do you wanna wink and nod to things? How much do you want it to yeah. be a, a, a like a player discovers it? Like I, I think that if if you get this aha moment of a, a, a person's like going through your game and, and they're just kind of doing the normal thing, and then you get to a point where something's alluded to of oh yeah, and did you ever touch that painting back in whatever? Someone eventually will go back and like touch a painting or something, and like yeah. this whole new thing opens up. Yeah, I think that's cool because then people will start analyzing your game and, and ripping everything apart and like going through yeah. all these different dialogues right. and like okay, if I have this person in my party at this point, and I say this, 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 and this, like this happens or yeah, something like right. that. I think that's cool. I, I would love to see how many Easter eggs and, and, you know, different, you know, things that we could just kind of bake right. in. Right. How many people would, would it, find that stuff? Yeah. Or, and, and how much do we have to allude to it? How much do we have to beat people over the head with it? Do we just have at least that one thing that just no one knows about? Like, I don't know. It's, it's tough because 
I mean, for people to find stuff, you need a pretty <laughs> big player base, right? Well, that, right, and that's that's, so, the, that's the thing. It's tough because I don't know how many people are actually going to play this game that doesn't even exist. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it'd be interesting. I think my approach would be I have a lot of faith in the players. Mm-hmm. So I would do let's let's pretend for a second we're like a big studio or something and everyone's really excited about Okay, what's well, the studio name? Here we go. I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, big studio. Got it. Let's go. Big Studio Incorporated. Incorporated. LTD. LTD? I don't know. TLD? That's my initials. Oh, okay. TLD? No, LTD. Limited? Is that not a thing? I, you lost me. Okay. I don't know. LT- I mean, what does it stand for? I don't know. Oh. Is that a company name? LT- no, it, LTD? No, that's that's like a thing. Like I, oh, I think LT- it's like limited or it's some sort of corporation thing. Again, we're talking about things way outside like you our, put it at the end? scope of knowledge. Yeah, it's like a TM. Like it's not. like it couch company yeah. LTD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wonder what that means. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll look it up after. <laughs> Anyways, Leave a message in the so we have our big below. gaming studio, yeah. big gamers right. are us, and our game's coming out, right? Like, it's really anticipated. I would be comfortable doing something like you press A on a specific blade of grass and something crazy happens. Yeah. I mean, like, that, like it's like, oh, here's like a little sprout, sure. and then it's like, pull on it, don't pull on it, and then they pull on it, and it's like, you Pull, it comes up a little bit and then you can keep doing that and you have to do it like 30 times and then it just keeps going or something and then you climb up it and, and then talk to a giant yeah, yeah that's what I'm yeah. saying it's like I would be comfortable doing it and it'd be a random pixel yeah in the middle of nowhere which would be but like that's the stuff that people talk about afterwards right or that's the, the 20 years in the future whenever like, somebody's oh, like, man. like watching someone I else play I can't believe it. they had the balls to give this bartender 12 pages <laughs> of dialogue I think that just turns into a joke. I mean, I know a lot of it, and, and we want to be serious in a lot of that stuff. I'm sure we'll we'll get down that well, road. Well, th- that was my question. I mean, I don't know if we've ever really talked about this, but like, what is our mindset going into this game? Is it going to be, how serious is it going to be? I know right. that we talk about putting a lot of jokey stuff in there, which you have to have humor in the game. Sure. I mean, any yeah. game. But, you know, is it just going to be one big meme? Is it actually going to try to do something serious? Like, I don't know where your mindset is on that. I think that, and that's that's going to be one of the challenges. It fluctuates day to day, right? Like a couple right. of days ago, I'm like, oh, I'm super depressed. I don't want to do anything or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, so that would obviously the reflect artist into it. Yeah, <laughs> this problems. Angsty, yeah. yeah, but then you know, like uh, there'll be times when I'm like, why? What are we even like? Let's just screw with people, right? Like, let's yeah. just, let's just go in and 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 just be super memey and super. Yeah. Uh, hey, th- this this guy has a crazy hairstyle. It's totally not not the the villains like son, you know, like yeah, whatever, right. like yeah. uh, that's the kind of stuff that I think would be funny. Um, and it's, it's weaving that like, you know, let's make it super funny while being serious. Can we, yeah, can we have dude, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's weird. Like I would like to tell a good story. I, I think at the end of the day, pen on paper, we will be more serious than funny. I think, yeah, I think maybe. that's where we go. Is I, I think, think we'll start we, taking it too serious. Yeah, I think Not once we serious. start doing things, we'll get a better feel for it. Um, just experimenting with how things are going and, yeah. and what our narrative feels like and stuff like that. And we'll have the, the gags and stuff, I'm sure, just because we have a lot of ideas for that kind of stuff. And it would be funny. And I think it'd be good. Like that, that stuff's, you know, we want to have something for everyone pretty much, right? Yeah. I mean, Ideally, but yeah. it, but at the, at the same time, it's I mean, you'll never get it. But whatever you know. we want, you know. Like, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but I, that's that's stuff that I want in the game. You I know, the funny stuff. I, I think the more we do it, the more we be like, we should make a visual novel. We might. I don't know if you go on Steam and check out visual novels. They <laughs> get you, great reviews. Did you buy it? The oh, the visual, visual novel, novel maker. maker? No, yeah. I, I mean that's that's gonna be like ten fifteen dollars. It's super. Oh really? Yeah. It's. it's I wonder brilliant. how good that is. I don't know. Come Maybe that's what it. we're making, but well, I think that's it, right? Like, how much of it do we want to walk around and check check different things and stuff? And do we want to write all the little bits of dialogue or all the little, you know, interactions and things with with things within the world? Yeah. Or do we want to focus on something that's a little bit more story driven and it is a visual novel where you have these different characters come in and you have to talk to them and and you know, you know figure about? out what the main story is. So I had this idea, and this is like this would be impossible, but how crazy would this be? You have a story about like time travel. Okay. So my favorite type of time travel in movies is where it's linear, 
where them going back in time affects what you're seeing currently. Sure. Okay. So okay. for example, like I just watched the Harry Potters, right? Uh huh. The third one, which is my favorite one by far, has the time travel in it, right? Where they go back with the time turner. Yeah. So everything that they're doing the first time around, you know, like in the middle of the movie, these random things happen. Like a rock comes through the window and breaks the vase and right. that gets their attention. So they know the bad guys are coming. They can get out. And you're like, that was weird. But then you just forget about it. Yeah. Later in the movie, it's like, that's them doing the thing, throwing the rock, warning themselves. Right. So it's linear. There's one timeline. See, the thing with that, though, is I don't think that's as crazy as you think it would be. Because well, it, it would, here's the thing. Yeah. So we create a game or whatever. The story is everything that happens in the story is you are influencing it to get to the last result. Yeah. So it would be wild. You don't even understand I mean, because the, you're it would take over the whole whiteboard. Yeah. But like, that's, <laughs> that's what, what I'm saying. <laughs> so like the story could be like not even that long and it'd be like, okay, so you get from point A to point B, but point B is you going back and influencing point C so that, you know, you can get there and then, Point D is that roadblock, and then you know you just keep going back and back or yeah. whatever. That would get insane. I, I think you're onto something there. See, I don't even know how. Like, I'm confusing myself just talking about it because. Well, I, I think it could be something head. where it's like, okay, hey, you have, um, you know, your your party, and you're going up to a gate, right? Yeah. And this guard's like, I'm not letting you through. Like, blah blah. blah. And then all of a sudden, like the alarm bells go off. Yeah. And he's like, what? And then you hear somebody be like, yeah, oh, how cool would it know, be like, if it's like attacked or something? Oh, man. Like I have like a guardian angel or oh, man, like there's like a secret assassin trying to help me. And then later down the line, it's just you. It's just you because yeah. like you're sitting there. Let's say you go up to that gate and this is what they do in the movie. So, well, you go up to the gate and you have now gone back in time and you're watching yourself go up to the gate and you're like, oh, yeah, my guardian angel is going to come right now and distract the guards. Wait, nothing's happening. Fuck, and then you go do something, and then right. boom, there it is. You that know what I mean? Cool. Yeah. See, that's like where it gets crazy. Yeah, I, I, I think that if we're programming it, and it's, it's a set thing. I'm not saying we could make this, dude. I'm no, saying, I'm saying I, such a cool. I think, I think we could. In my mind, I, I can kind of see how we would program that out because it would all just be events that right. You would basically fudge it. So there would be the first event is getting through the story. Yeah. And these things are happening. And then the second event is going back and figuring out how you helped yourself yeah, you initially. Would, you would go back and it would just be essentially like a clone of your characters. Like your characters yeah. would still be your characters, but you would just see Like those old time trials stuff. things where the yeah, it, you're racing against your shadow. I think I think you could fudge that. Uh, it wouldn't be easy. I think we would have to write how a lot would of stuff it, down. How would the stuff, end but, work though? So at some point you come to the end and you have to go back in time. So... Obviously, you get to the end and figure out this isn't going to work, and then you go back to try to fix things. That's when you need to write it down, man. Dude, I, I don't know. know. It's be very confusing. I think it'd be very I cool, I think though. everyone's confused right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you talk about time travel, it gets super confusing, but that would be so sweet, just coming to that realization where it's like, oh, yeah, this is a time travel game. <laughs> I, I, but, I mean, is it something that you need to have the entire game, right? Or could you just have one aha moment? It could, yeah, it could be it, one aha it, moment, right? like a small section. Absolutely. Yeah. I was thinking like an entire game, that would just be wild where everything that happened to you that you seem yeah. like, oh, that was dumb luck or that, you know, that was has weird. A game, has a game done that? I can't think of anything. The only time traveling, I mean, obviously there was a little bit of time traveling in uh, Titanfall. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's not, I mean, that was one level. So that, that's something. Um, there was a game uh, with like Rush, I think it was... Um, Zach's going to kill me because I, I, I can't remember it. But it, it was, uh, you have like Russians... And it was this weird um, time travel ish thing, and they had like different riffs and stuff. Okay. Um, man, I can't think of the name, but it, it was it was fine, right? Like it was okay. Sure. Um, but I don't think I, games. I can't think of anything like that. And you have to keep in mind, there's a lot of different types of time travel, right? Yeah. Like I know exactly what you're talking about, though. Like, right. With, like this single with the single timeline Harry, yeah, with the Harry Potter stuff. Usually, how it works is like you create an alternate timeline. Uh huh which is much easier. In my opinion, it's much easier to follow because, you know, I mean, now there's two like, things going honestly, on. Honestly, that's something we could do too. We could have like a, the the evil version of the... Well, like we could do all of that in one... Well, I was just having thing. these random game thoughts. Another one I had was, what if... Um, and this kind of was inspired by your describing Journey to me. Was okay. that the game? Yep. Where 
you met up with someone you didn't even realize that they were another player. Yes. Yeah. So you're playing this game or something and you have to connect to the online service for some reason, but you're you're just thinking that like, oh, it's just, you know, to keep track of the players or whatever. And you're playing this game and uh you can pick like, oh, you're a good guy or a bad guy or whatever, right? And you're playing through this game. And it's kind of like Pokemon where you have your rival or something and they're reoccurring and you keep battling them. And it's like, what if the end of the game you realize you're playing against some other dude or something yeah. like that? That'd be crazy. And that could be something too where you have like these canned responses. So like if you're if you're talking back and forth, you have somebody and you like pick your dialogue tree. Yeah. So it still looks like the NPC. Right, exactly. Like you are you. picking your dialogue tree. Yeah. And then they're seeing what you picked. Yeah. So you're like, oh, okay. That's yeah, that'd be just cool. what they're programmed to say, right? Yeah. That would be crazy. I just love those aha moments like you're talking about where it's like, yeah. I and mean, and your description of Journey sounded so, like that experience sounds so Journey was amazing. A, was a one of a kind for me. I mean, that that's something where I would love it if we could have, and I don't even have necessarily think that we necessarily like need a like an aha moment, but it could be something that's, as long as it makes you really feel something yeah. one way or the other, that's what I'm looking for. Right, no, absolutely. You want to get a response. Yeah. Um. The third thing I was thinking about. Yep. Okay. Cute. This is the last one I said. Dude, this this big game company is is going crazy. Big big gamers big Inc. Gamers LDC. Inc. LTC. Yes. LT, LTD. D. Anyways, yeah. big uh-huh. gamers. Uh fuck. Your thing I remember you were telling me about how you feel like every single person is the best at something in the world. Yes. This would be a fantastic anime. Everyone that idea is correct. Because every anime has like a premise like this where something's like that is the premise. Sure. Okay. Like everyone has a quirk, like a, a superpower that's like My Hero Academia, right? So that's the premise. I'm going to just nod like I know what you're talking well, about. Well, it's My like, Hero. sure. Everyone sure. has a superpower. It's really easy to understand, yeah. right? So yeah, it's yeah. like, that's that's easy. So anyways, this one would be everyone is the best in the world at something. And some things are like real minute, like you said, like someone might be the best breather ever. I don't know. Yeah. Um. And the main character of this anime is the best in the world at telling what everyone else is the best at. He can just, he just knows. <laughs> okay. And then it would be like something like, oh, his best friend is the best murderer in the world. Yikes. You know what I mean? There's something sure. crazy like that. Yeah. And then you get, oh my God, it'd be fucking crazy. And then you have like a third character <laughs> who's like, I don't know, it's like the best detective in the world or something. It's like, yeah. It would get wild, you know what I mean? Like, what would you do with that power where you can tell, like, what everyone is amazing I mean, every at? Every episode, like, that that could be something very easily episodic where you yeah. just you it, interact with, like, these people that are... Every episode, something different. Yeah. And you could get in some crazy, like, um, you can run free with that prompt. You know what <laughs> I mean? That premise. You're, you're the best person that can, I don't know, talk to, maybe not talk to animals, but, like, interact with animals. Like, yeah zebras i don't know like yeah no exactly yeah, like, like, like yeah <laughs> beavers love you i still believe that man i like that's crazy and and the sad thing is no one i would say most people don't know like okay right i don't know uh who, who's the best uh who's the best quarterback right now um that's a big debate patrick mahomes let's say okay patrick mahomes he that's not even what he's good at can you imagine that? Like you're wrong, he, but yeah. <laughs> that, oh yeah, I know. That's that's what. what that's if, yeah, no, right. Like, what if he's the best? What if he's just naturally programmer, better at uh, programming yeah. the accordion? Sure, balancing chopsticks on his chin while playing the violin. I don't know, but Maybe. that's what I'm saying. Is like yeah. it, that's that's nuts that to would think be, about. That's what would be great about the show because you see these ridiculous. And, and I'd imagine it logistically. Like you're in the show and he like sees it over their head or something. Yeah. I don't know. Um. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Like his best friend is like the best technological person in the world. Mm-hmm. So he makes this device, like a glasses or something, that locks into his brain and he can see over their head because you know he can tell what people are good at. Right. Um. So the audience can see. You know. So yeah, you get these things. It's like best. You know, banana peeler. <laughs> it's like. Great. What it like? But then you get into these kind of like darker episodes where it's like, oh, this person, like you said, like is yeah. is murderer. He's, he's like the, the best, best murderer in the world, or he's the best liar, or he's the yeah. best, you know like best right. forger or something. Like, like what that if? Could be crazy. What if he wakes up? It could be a very funny show, or it could be a very dark show. Yeah, it could be both. Like my father's the best liar in the world. Yeah. Uh oh. Yep. 
<laughs> like that's crazy. That could be someone could. Take I think idea. that's, that's actually good. you're onto something. That's, there. It's something good. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to take a take a quick break? I know we're at an hour. Yeah, so. I'm good for that. Okay, so I know last week we were talking about a lot of anime. All all the animes. All yes. the animes. Uh-huh. Speaking of which. How are you doing on Cowboy Bebop? Okay, so I made some promises. You did. I did not finish Cowboy Bebop. However, <laughs> no. However, so when you think about it, I was on episodes. I watched three episodes. I am now on episode. I want to say eighteen, nineteen. It's pretty good. I feel like so. I only have like maybe six episodes left. I just want the record to show that you originally said, "Oh, I'll just finish it this weekend." Yes, I and know. then I and corrected I you and said, You're "No, right. man, you're right. You can't do that." I I think I. Could have, you would hate your life. It would have been, it would have been a lot of bebop, right. a lot of. That's what I'm saying. Straight, I don't want you yeah. to dislike the show, so pace yourself. I legitimately like the show. I might like the show more than Firefly, which is kind of crazy because I, I put those kind of in the same ballpark. They're mm-hmm. both like short run. They're both in kind of space, yeah, cowboy esque things. There's bebops. There's some bebops There's here some and there. Fireflies, um, which. So here, here's my, and we'll we'll kind of go more into it probably uh, whenever I finish it. Yeah. Um, but so first off, I I know we talked about how I don't like anime, like over the top anime stuff with like the chibi stuff and the the crazy like the like, tropes. Um, not so much the tropes is like the different art styles where like you know oh and things get like, like silly scream, yeah yeah. Um, so Ed from Cowboy Bebop yeah. Does all my, of that. M- yes, and my favorite character. <laughs> exactly. So if, if you want to know how crazy it is from from watching that, where I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to hate this character too. Like, oh, she's my favorite. Yeah. Um, they don't do enough with her. And that's no. kind of, that's my thing is like, I, I keep waiting for her to be like a bigger part of it. And she just randomly shows up, says like two lines, an episode. And that's yeah. It. I um, think she does get her own stuff. The, the one I just watched, uh, she did get some like, uh, like, magic mushrooms or something and she oh, you watched the mushroom one nice yeah so like they, they, that one um she did have her her kind of day in the sun like so the, the thing that i don't understand is i think the with vicious and yeah all that backstory and stuff i don't understand any of it and there's really only been two episodes i think yeah like made ones that's kind of the point they leave things pretty vague but okay. i will say they do explore it more so you you'll okay. get more context I don't know if it's because to me it's like okay, well, this is the hook, right? Like this is the whole point of this character. I should care dramatically See, about this, and I and I right don't no, right. I mean, and and that's the beautiful thing about Cowboy Bebop is it's not a focused narrative. It's very vague. It's very, yeah. you know, like the whole premise of the show is pretty much about everyone's past and them mm-hmm. dealing with those kind of you know demons of their past. Yeah. Did you get to um? I always forget his name. Uh, oh man, who's the dude with the the robot arm? I don't know. I don't know. You I know, know what I'm talking about. Yes, right? absolutely. Sure. Fuck. Yeah. I just looked this up too because I forgot his name last time. When and and about I this. was I was I love him. Though. Sure, he's I knew all too. the character names, and he's the only one that I just I can't like. I'm gonna start think if I can me. think of it. But okay. Anyways, so yeah. have you gotten to like his? He did he have an episode yet where they they explore like what he, he was all about? He. Did you're you're talking about like his girlfriend who yeah. who like he had like the pocket you, watch and, and stuff you like found that. Out he was like a cop and everything. Yeah, and he was yeah. he was like the what they call him the the dog or something like that. Black black dog. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah no, I I, I like that episode. Like I, I like all the episodes because the way they they jump into an episode and they jet oh, jet. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> you, I'll take there your word you for it. But you, you jump into an episode and they just, the way that they talk to each other, it's like they're recapping everything that happened up to that point. So like one of, <laughs> and, and it's, it's hard to explain, but it's one of those things where like, you know, they're all talking and they're like, oh, we all were going after these other bounties. And then just the, these lines of dialogue of like, well, you said that we should all, you know, do our own thing and healthy competition and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm caught up. And like, it's interesting that they catch you up and get you invested into whatever story it is within, you know, like a 25 minute span. Yeah. One of the episodes that st- stood out to me was like the, the single room episode where it's like essentially alien 
and it yeah, was like, right. like his leftovers in the fridge or something <laughs> yeah. like mutated. That's a good uh, one. It, it was so weird, man. It was so yeah. like what, and like he had like these nods to alien when he's like trying to track it down and all this stuff. And like, yeah. it was horror meets just ridiculousness. Yeah. And I loved it. Like it, yeah. it's so quirky that uh, I'm into it. So the, the show know. doesn't take itself insanely seriously. But until it, also, it does, until it does, right? And then, and it's then like, it just hits it, you, and you're like, right? Yeah, it does it so well. It's such a unique show. Like, it's really yeah. actually hard to to describe, you know, what it actually is. It's just fantastic. Like, my one of my favorite parts of it is just the environment. I just mm-hmm. love being in that universe. It's so cool. It's like I said last week. It's like a very grimy futuristic. Like when you see futuristic like Star Wars or something, it's always very clean and everything's. Yeah new and stuff like that but they're on this dingy like ship yep they're scraping by they're poor as fuck and like it's very like do what you can to get by kind of thing it's like i just like that kind of stuff um that environment is what really appeals to me yeah i mean like the history with like that that's part of it is like oh yeah earth all this bad shit happened and yeah and they're crazy people down there and it's right. just like, okay, well, I want to learn more about that. Yeah, like, that's, that's what I'm cool. saying. It's like, like, yeah, it always leaves you wanting more. Like, I would love to explore the lore. Like, there's not a lot of lore in All the Cowboy lore is Bebop. just pulled from their dialogue, and they don't beat you over the head with it. They no. just they allude to things, or they just assume that you know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. And I love that yeah. in a game, because it does make you pay attention. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to finish it. I'll, I will I will 100% have it done by the like next Spike? podcast. Uh, yes, I like Spike. Okay. Is he my favorite character? No. He might actually be my least favorite character. Out of the four. Including the dog. Well, the dog's great. Ayn is, is very <laughs> Ayn, good. I, like, is yeah, good. I, I think um, everyone I else Corgis. is just a little bit more interesting, I guess. Which is weird because, like, you know, Spike should be... Spike's like the guy that's just, like, he's always he's always good at everything. He's the I've hero, I've to see yeah. him, like, fail at anything, right? Well... I don't think so. I actually don't think that's the case. I'm trying to think back. It's been a little bit since I've seen it. So I think there there are circumstances where, you know, he's not just perfect. I, but I guess my thing is, like, everyone else has this um, thing where they're not perfect, where, like, even um, Ed, who's playing chess, in the back of my mind, is like, okay, she's going to win the chess game, and she's the smartest person yeah. in the entire world. But, and, right. like, she gets beat, and it's just like, oh, okay, so, like, yeah. she's even fallible. Right. Like, like, the cutesy anime yeah woman. right um, no yeah you're, you're right i guess yeah he's the main character right so i, I, I well, just thought I he mean, was the is, coolest and i think a he, big part of it cool. is because of the voice actor his voice is like one of my favorites man he's just yeah so iconic uh well, it's uh jeff bloom jeff bloom i yeah i think you're right i think that's right i'm very bad with voice actor names but i, yeah. I believe you're correct i think it's bloom i can't remember his first name might be jeff um, maybe not maybe Rodney but yeah he's Rodney done a Blue. lot of fantastic characters we were actually watching Final Fantasy and he was he was Vincent in that right he was I, I liked him a lot in Vincent actually I think that was probably the only the voice actor the only I liked voice in, actor in that, that movie was good dude <laughs> that, that voice acting and dialogue was just rough I'm especially happy. with Tifa she was the worst and we that was we're talking about Advent Children Advent Children the the yeah, director's cut or something like that yeah the extended version it was I would um, never want to see the original, by the way. If the extended version is supposed to save that movie. Yeah. It, like, the thing is. Just for some I'm context, by the way. We, yeah, good. Kyle, uh, <clears throat> who's our friend, he's been on the show, uh, had us come over. We watched Final Fantasy VII Avent Children, the extended cut. And basically, the thing surrounding this is the extended cut makes it watchable. And the original film was really terrible, I guess, is what from what he described to us. So. Yeah, I'm not saying it was a bad movie. I would say it's maybe a C. Um, yeah, for like general plot. Like I was blown away at how well some of the stuff held up. So they they it remastered really it good, in like yeah. 4K. So it was super super sharp. We were watching on an OLED thing. It had yeah. HDR, all of that stuff. Um, I think the the coolest thing is the way it was shot. You never like the action was always very easy to follow uh, to me anyway. Yeah, where I thought it was. Very well done. It was very anime. Um, a little stiff on the animation, but again, it came out in what, 2005? Yeah, right. Very long time ago. Um, so I think it held it holds up pretty well, and I'm, I'm happy to understand that story up to now. So I, I think I'm good on like the Final Fantasy VII stuff. 
Yeah, it's actually interesting. You know, having all the context is going to be good going forward. So yeah, like whenever we play remake. Yeah, I, I didn't tell you this. I had a dream that I got a PS5. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! It was so I, I dreamt that I found this like cardboard box in the back of a shelf, uh, at, like a Best Buy or something, and it was just like it was a PS5 had a little like damage to it. But I was like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy yeah, this, yeah. and like I brought it up, and they're just they're trying to ring it out, and they couldn't find it or whatever, and they're like, let's see if we have anything in the back. I'm like, okay, it's never gonna happen, and they had like a new one in the back, no and it's just way. some person didn't know. I was like, here you go, and I walked out of the store with it, and I woke up, and I was uh, just like, oh my goodness, I was so excited, dude. Uh, what if our dreams are an alternate universe? Don't even get me started on like deja vu and things like that because yeah. it, it scares the hell. I, I don't have like a quick deja vu thing where I'm like, oh, that's weird. I, I remember that happening. It's like minutes long, prolonged. Like I can tell, like making this up, but like I can tell you what you would, what you were going to yeah, say have, while you said. I have the same thing. Maybe not that long. That's kind of crazy. It is. But it's, it is it's scary like, as hell. I'm doing something and I'm like, dude, I've done this before. Yeah, it's really insane. Uh, like dialogue, uh, feelings, smells. Like I think a lot of it is like you're in a location and from a perspective. So let's say we're recording here. Yeah, I'm sure after like. So long after doing this. Yeah, we do this for a we'll year. Be, it's, you know, yeah. we'll be like, did we talk about this before? Yeah. Now this we have recorded, so we can we have definitive <laughs> proof whether we've talked about it before or we can tell the future. Sure. But yeah, I think it's a lot of it comes down to that. But it is weird, isn't it? Isn't it just a really strange It is it is very scary and makes you wonder a lot. Yeah. Again, not to be super heavy, but it's just like This has been a little heavier, but that's okay. Yeah. I, I mean like, what if there's another timeline where Tyler gets a PS5? I mean, I'm sure Tyler would be fine in that timeline. I don't know. Like, do you believe in multiple timelines? Is that something that you actually... Uh... I'm not smart enough. I think... I mean, there's nothing indicating that the, that wouldn't be the case, I suppose, right? So, like, quantum theory and, yeah, and all right. that stuff. Now, now, the real question is how much of that... Like every time you do anything, like you blink, like you just blinked like six times, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> if you only blinked five, is that a different timeline? Four, a different timeline? Might be because, I mean, I guess there would be like infinite timelines, right? Right. I so mean, like you take a drink of water. Everything would like, ha- I mean, if, if so I don't take a drink now. If you're talking about infinite timelines, literally everything happens. Right. All at once. Right. So yeah. anything. So this actually, this is very big brain. So stick with me here. This has been a lot of big brain stuff. Yeah. And I do it poor job of explaining it. I, mean, so I we, do apologize. We already talked about manual transmissions. Let's talk about True, yeah. quantum theory now. So, okay, let's start with tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe mm-hmm. is a solvable game. You can know every yes. combination of tic-tac-toe and always win or draw, which I can because it's actually not that hard. There's a yeah, certain go, go number of combinations. Sure. Your brain can understand that because it's not a lot of data to process, things of that nature. Chess is the same exact thing. I guess the next level would be like Connect Four, where yet that is also a solvable game, obviously, because there's only a certain number of options. And if, you know, I suck at Connect Four, but I do know people who like can't lose because, you know, you always go for the middle one and certain rules that you establish and Mm -hmm. you always win or draw or whatever. Then there's chess, which is also theoretically a solvable game. There's only a certain number of moves. However, supercomputers cannot solve the game. They do not know every combination, every outcome right. of every game ever that could be played, right? So this is a solvable game still that has not been solved where it's like, okay, this move will always result in a winner draw. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then you get to life. <laughs> there's only a certain- <laughs> The number, ultimate chess game. There's only a certain number of things that theoretically you could do there's only a certain number of spaces I could walk in this room. There's, I mean, it gets insane. Like, it gets unfeasibly... You can't comprehend how many things you could do. Like, even if we confined ourselves to this room, there's nearly an infinite number of things we could do, you know? Well, even you just, like, leaning yeah. to the left versus the right and different things like that. But think that, about it. Like- there's only a certain number... There's only a certain amount of space. So there's only so much movement you can do. Yeah. There's only a certain number of words. Sure eventually you will run out of things to do. There's only a certain number of atoms. What happens when you run out of things to do? Well, I mean, technically the universe is still expanding, right? So I don't know. Well, I guess my, I mean, sure. Like if you believe in all that mumbo jumbo, 
I mean, the Earth's flat, but yeah, I obviously. mean, other than that. So my my thing is like, what it, if you run out of things to do? It, it would, I mean, you, but it would be like the order too. Just because you run out of things on a on a certain length, and this is not not a good thing to go down. <laughs> okay, it's like okay, just because you decided to walk left and go around clockwise or whatever, like nothing's stopping you from then turning around and going the opposite way. Yeah, and like that's. I don't think you ever run out of things to do because they're yes, infi- you do, but they're infinitely repeatable. How could you? Because you die at some point. Yeah. Well. Okay. I mean, the ultimate running out of things. To, like <laughs> to my do. body will decompose at some point. Right. But there's theoretically there would be a, a instance where your body would never decompose. No. Because yeah, absolutely. Because if if you if you think about it in quantum physics, then uh, there is somebody that has already come up with a way to preserve life indefinitely. Or there's, See, there's that, a way to... that you might know, be like, impossible. Because you're looking at it from a very linear, like, just you. And, and to an extent, that makes sense because you Well, no, you're, I mean, I'm just saying that so we can comprehend it. I mean, everyone can do something. Right. So we're just there's, exponentially getting bigger, okay? The number's getting bigger of things that can happen. Every person, you know, that's a another exponential amount of events that can happen. Like, there's some timeline where in five seconds, our Russian military guys gonna kick down our door and take us prisoner that might be one that's crazy though but that's what i mean well, that's if, what if, i if think about is if there's infinite timelines how many i don't know how, how many timelines am i dead in all uh, mo- most of them i would assume no absolutely it'd have to be how well i don't want to get how ra- many timelines do i, I not exist in look, yeah man, i, I go with that i don't want to get crap well that's what i mean no, yeah no, like, i understand where you're going with that but let's say i won the race in the pool right how many do I die after like being, you know, plenty after, you know, growing up and things like that. Plenty, plenty. I don't plenty. know. That's crazy. I'm trying to like think back think on about, how many co- think, close calls I've had. Well, that's what I'm saying is like, think about every time you've ever jumped into a pool, right? Okay. There is a, so okay, once theoretically, oh, just one time. <laughs> okay. just but theoretically there is, there is a timeline where you slip, you fall, you hit your head and now you drown. Yep. Not, again, not to be more... I don't know what I... I apologize. I don't know why I'm so morbid today. Dude, you, need, I, to, like, you need to not take days off. I gotta you get stop. Real, uh, I gotta, your mind I gotta, waters a bit too much. I've been watching way too much Bobo Burnham. The, the, the thing is, I would say you are more dead than alive in all the infinite universes. Right? I don't think so. I think it's kind of hard to die. Again, you're thinking about yourself. I think... Now, in these infinite universes... Am I always born in 1997? That's the thing. Do you have to be? Because that kind of depends on what my parents I, do, right? Well, so I, mean. I, think you it would, does I think you would have fluctuate to fluctuate a little bit. You would be a different. You would not be you, right? Because and again, not, well, to, what if not, they, to, not to be graphic, but you are that one, one, dude, one how sperm. Fucking crazy is that, by the way. I know. That we go from that to this. I know. That's insane. And then we make make couch company the most <laughs> successful business to it's, ever. Hey, in in the infinite universes, it'll take we, off. We got dude. Be. That's what I'm saying. We're rolling the dice. Yeah, you know, it's one in five hundred trillion. But there's a universe out there, there where yeah. we are successful at if this. If we just blink the right number of times <laughs> and, and <laughs> walk in the you know right circle, maybe we, it's we an get. SOS signal. Something. Something. But, but think about that. Like, so I I think that's more of like a philosophy thing where it's like, okay, you are one sperm. Like, it, you have to be this person. The yeah. thing is, though. You being in front of me and you being like, you know, you short well, of. Well, so what? What are we like, describing as me? So well, that's that's the other half of it is not just you physically. I could get more different genetic traits. I could have different hair color, different eye color. You could, but then you wouldn't be. So I wouldn't be me. So I have to look like you. this. So that eliminates a lot of variations in the I, infinite well, timelines. So, but I think I think does does you make up the physical appearance or more mental? Could you be the same mental person in a different body? Well, and, not to get super crazy, but... Do you want to add the soul in there? The I don't soul know. would be that's what technically... I mean. that To me, that's what the person is. Do you is believe the soul. there is... Because a, everything else can be changed. Except... In, everything. In, your attitude can be changed. Sure. Your perception can be changed. Everything but about if, you can be but changed. But if you believe in a religion, can you also believe in, in multiple universes with different things like that? Because then it would well, be it essentially... You can't. I don't know. What's the, because I mean, if you believed in God, I mean, you would think that he would oversee everything. But then, but with multiple variances, like you would, you would have things where the Bible never was written. Yeah, maybe. Right? I don't know. So, I mean, does that mean he doesn't exist? I don't, I have no idea. Because here's the thing, dude. <laughs> we, when, have, when you we talk about, down this road. <laughs> when you talk about God, sure. How are you supposed to comprehend that? You can't. 
That's what I'm saying. So who am I to say like, oh, this is how it would make sense. Right. It's not going to make sense to me. That's sure. what like people talk about like heaven or something. It's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, you're going to be walking around with your dog from your childhood and shit like that. And I'm like, you're not going to have a body, bro. You're not going to have any senses. It's going to be a completely different thing. Right. That, that you don't even understand. Like you can't begin to understand. It's like taking a caveman and showing him your keyboards. And that doesn't like, terrify it, you? Like that's what I'm saying. It's I have like, no I have control over it, man. I have no I control mean, you over have it. control over it. Don't go 180 miles in the Autobahn. But it's fun. I, I'm sure. I only get so much time on this earth, dude. I'm going to go <laughs> 180 go. on the Autobahn. I mean, I, I envy that, that mindset, I guess. It's a, it, I mean, depends on your perspective. Yeah. You know, it, it might be a stupid thing to do, but dude, I <laughs> want to live my life. Hey, and you and you should. I'm not saying you shouldn't live your life. But I'm not stupid about that. Like I'm not going to go do a bunch of drugs and like. In some universe, you did. Yeah, I'm sure. I, that that doesn't even surprise me, dude. I went to music school. Like that stuff is prevalent. I, I mean, there there are universes where we are the best football players, right? <sighs> That's tough. It has to be because then you have to change your genetics dude like we are not exactly infinite 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 yeah i mean but then that goes back to are you you are you infinite timeline? what makes you tyler infinite timeline single soul okay you can have the same soul but you could be dave you could be dave defazio i almost was bruno yeah you could be bruno defazio the football player i know that sounds feasible but that's the thing is is you know i was on the football team i never played football in a universe, I do play football. Yeah. Maybe I enjoy football. I mean, I don't have the build. Maybe that's area. your best thing you, you is, are. I don't know. I mean, How do you maybe, know? Maybe. I, like, I think there are some things what that if just, you, you started have to work hard on, you know? Like, when, yeah. I mean, it, it comes to like talent versus at work ethic and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I could work as hard as I can and I'll never be a professional athlete ever. Sure. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a... A limitation to what people can do. But you could. I mean, like, that's the thing is you, you could, like, in some universe, do that. Yeah, I mean, in if theory. I have a better, I don't know, something. <laughs> genetic. Just genetic. I don't always, know if it's genetic or genetics. whatever. Like, so, sure. like, my my grandfather on my mom's side, my mom's dad, yeah. So, he passed away when I was really young. Yeah. He was a professional baseball player. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for like the Reds, but then he got like drafted to Korea, so it was kind of interesting. What if he was alive? Yeah. I think about that all the time. Like sure. this guy was amazing. At least how my mom describes it. He was really good. Like he was like you know kind of like the handy man. Like mm-hmm. you talk about cars. I'm sure I would know everything about a car. I bet I could take a car apart if he taught me how to do that. You know. I mean, my dad was very good at football, right? Like yeah. uh, from what I hear, he was like actually like very good at football yeah and my dad's not a huge dude but given the given the timelines when he would be playing football and and things like that like there was a possibility of him going to college getting college but then he in in high school he got clipped and he had to get like surgery on his leg and it's just he's done he's he's never gonna do it again so like in a different universe where he doesn't like see that seems more feasible to me like there's more timelines where he does become a professional football player because or at least the possibility yeah sure but then he was all. I but, mean, but if he does, we never meet. Maybe because you're not living in Pittsburgh unless he plays for the Steelers. Maybe you never yeah, know. That's like, what that's I'm saying. Thing, so it's like that's why it's how many timelines where we don't know each other at all. If if nothing else, it should make you feel <clears throat> you being like you know like like yourself. Like you should feel special. Yeah, everyone's considering. Yeah, like considering everyone's like, unique. Exactly where you're at. Special is an interesting word. I mean. What makes a person special? Is it uniqueness? I mean, I mean, everyone's unique. So is yeah, it everyone's being unique. Definitely unique. Yeah, if, every, I mean, if everyone's unique, the, yeah. are you still unique? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you said yeah, very probably. definitively. I'll I'll take that. The definition of unique is, you know, that you're an different. Individual. I think that's one of the main things that people want in this world is to be an individual and set apart from everyone else. The, the irony with that is the fact that like you have, we strive so hard to conform. Exactly. Like that's not as interesting. Yeah. I fall into that trap. Like definitely in high school and stuff, I always try to fit in and stuff because I care about what other people think. So I think actually my, my one, so I've been actually trying to like learn more about myself. I'm very bad at understanding what I want. (laughs) Okay. It's pretty interesting. Like I, I, I definitely do struggle with that. Like, 
what do I actually want out of life? What, what am I trying to do? You know, what my, what is my purpose? I'm sure everyone feels like that, but this kind of ties in with the project I want to do as well to try to get to know myself a little better with yeah. cataloging, you know, everything I've done. Um, but something that I think I've learned about myself is I want to be like respected. Like that's something I crave a lot. I want people to, you know, be proud of me or respect me, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. I get like a lot of um, satisfaction or accomplishment, I guess, out of what other people think, which isn't the most healthy thing, but that's like where my measure comes from really. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to say it's healthy or not. I think that's a very normal that's just what thing. I, yeah, right? like you want to be, if you want to be looked up to or you want to be known for something. Um, I, I think that that's the thing is like when, when you get to be older, you know, like it, at some point, like everyone thinks that they are special just because yeah. that's what you're told the entire time. Well, dude, you're, you're the main character of your own story. Right. So then it's very tough to, to think outside of, of, you know, your own yeah. sphere of, yeah. of being, even when you're trying to be like enlightened beyond that and talk and like literally what we're talking about now, <laughs> yeah. we're still talking about our own selfish kind of goals. We only know it through your stuff. perspective. We, you can only play this game in first person. Yeah. So it's like, you're not going to know anything else, but I, it does comfort me quite a bit when I, when I, you know, everything's really overwhelming, especially when, you know, you think everyone's talking about you or whatever, you know, something that's really helped me is, you know, everyone's more concerned about themselves than me. Yeah. You know, everyone's very selfish inherently, I think Mm -hmm. at least to some degree. And, they're going to be viewing things through their eyes. So I'm sure they're not dwelling on what I said in cafeteria, you know, that embarrassing, like I spilled milk on myself or something like, you know, they have their own things that are going on. So that's actually comforting to me. Cause like you don't stress about how other people feel as much. Like, yeah. I mean, as, as long worried. as you can keep that in the back of your mind, which it sounds like you, you can, like that's, yeah. that's a huge, that took a lot of time to find it, that it's out. It's a though. coping mechanism. Oh, not a coping mechanism, but like that, that's how you cope with worrying about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you seem like a big warrior though. I'm a very, oh, I worry all the time. Yeah. I like to overanalyze everything. That's just kind of, that's my nature. That was my mom instilled that in me in a very young age. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, that can get really overwhelming. I just like to, um, think things through yeah. to, to a fault, which is yeah. fine. So I we're going to make a video game and then, <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's going to be a, see, I, I think I'm balance each other out. I, I think, think we great. do. I think that's, that's a good yin yang that we have where I'm, yeah a lot more impulsive, I would say. Um, and you know, that it's going to be interesting to see how that plays off of each other. Yeah. Like I, I think for me, it's, it's all about the prepping. It's all about like figuring stuff out. Like, I mean, it, you know, even, even podcasting, even, uh, with the games and stuff, like I was off all day today, right? Yeah. I could have played any one of my video games that I bought at the sale, but <laughs> I, I much rather, would look at stuff and just like yeah. continue to browse the sale and just yeah. like add to my collection and do different the, things the, the and actually play the thing. Um, That's really interesting. Sam, I'm totally the opposite. I mean, you can even see before we started the podcast, you know, you're like, Hey, what topics do you want to discuss? Like, yeah. what are we going to go over? And I'm like, dude, just hit record, just, man. Let's just <laughs> rip it. Let's that's, just do it. But that's good. That's what we need is we need, we need someone like me to, prep and think and, and kind of lay up like some sort of foundation and, and I want to support. I'm, I always play a support class in any yeah, game. Yeah. I just want that's to. That's a lot of pressure on me, man. But, but that's the thing is you need to pull the trigger and you're just like, okay, hey, this is what we're doing. Yep. And you, you make a decision here. You want to do that's that. That's what I've been trying to do more and more is just and make it's, this It's decision. different types of, of leading, right? Like it, one could say like, okay, well, you know, if, if Tyler is never making decisions or never pulling a trigger on something, then you're just a follow-up. You're not, you're yeah. not actually leading something. But in a way, it's, it's leading people to you know, do whatever their own thing is where it's like, it's, it's guiding, it's, it's nurture, you know, nurturing, if you will. Tyler is, is means builder, right. Or like an actual like tile. Oh really? So it's like, I wait, what? Yeah. So, but your name, Tyler, I'm named Tyler. Yeah. And that was just old English from one who tiles roofs. Oh, nice. So if you want to put, you know, kind of, you were born to be an artist, man, swing on it. It's, uh, it's just builder. Like I, I like to support. I think mine, John is gift from God or something. Sure. So I'm 
pretty much the best. Basically born with Nike socks on. Born with Nike socks on. <laughs> I do have my Nike socks on 30 today. 30-foot vertical. I mean, it's pretty much pretty good. But, yeah. Man, that got heavy. Yeah, I mean, this Real that, heavy. We, we covered a lot of stuff. Uh, that's actually uh, all I really ha- I mean, had. Yeah, that's, that's a good place to stop. Um, maybe the only other thing I'll quickly add here, I did mention it uh, briefly, um, a little project that I'm trying yes, to do. right. Uh, of I want to catalog pretty much any type of media that I've ever Consume. ingested, <laughs> consumed. Seems like a very easy task. You yeah. Get it over well, a, I think I, I have it categorized, and I'm very bad at organizing things, so I'm probably just, it's going to be a disaster. This is why you need me. I got, I got you. I know, dude. This would be a project I think you'd like. Dude, oh, man, I'm thinking about it now. If we had like something like a chart or something mm-hmm. where we can label everything. Maybe we should, maybe it should be a joint effort. It would be really fun because what I'm thinking is, so we do video games and you can go by console. That's a really easy way to categorize. Sure. And then TV shows, movies, things like that. I think those are like the big three books, I guess. I don't really read books though. Um, <clears throat> but once you have all those categorized of like what you've played, read, whatever, um, now you can go through and, map out what you like and this goes back to me talking about like trying to find out more about myself so we talked about characters a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. i can now if i have that chart go through everything i've played and pick out the best characters and then hopefully my goal is like oh i really like these types of characters and oh man that's interesting i didn't know like i might make some discoveries some connections that might help with our project or you know just learn about myself really right. in general. I think it'd be really interesting to go like, you know, best environments, best, you know, if we're doing video games, best gameplay, like what do I actually like, you know, you, and, and having that mapped out would really help. Buddy, with I, could, I could give you that framework over a weekend. You yeah, just, dude, there'd be a lot of tell fun. me what the different uh, consoles are that I play. Oh, console. I mean, that's that's one field, right? You just need to, I mean, you're, well, you're we need basically that app, talking dude. about it. That app so would be Excel really nice doc, for that too. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That we need to get on that. We need to get on that app. We need to get on all those games we made and that anime. We have an anime now to the list. We need a company <laughs> name first. That's we need a I nice was big 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 gamers big gamers DP. Uh, yeah, yeah, D- uh, <laughs> that's our law firm. <laughs> big gamers. I forgot we about need a snappy firm. name. We do have a law firm. Couch company. We'll just uh, let's couch just, company. Oh, that's, oh sure. man. Yeah, that's fine. Um, couch company is good. DP Incorporated. Um, but I think it'd be really cool. Like just what I was thinking when I'm thinking about my favorite characters or things I really like, like my favorite TV show is Breaking Bad mm-hmm. and my favorite anime is called Code Geass. And the main character is very similar in that where they are pretty much bad guys trying to do noble things. I mean, more so in the anime than cause Walter White's not really a good guy. Like he's, no, he's, he's, he's a bad person. He's a bad person, yeah. yeah. So the anime one's more what I like because the main character in that's like my favorite character ever. Um, Do you find that that's going to... Let's say you had all that information. You had yeah. like black and white all, by the numbers. Here, here's what you like. Here's what you don't like. If you're making a game, would you actually strip out all the things you don't like? Or would you have no. to... Like you would have to include that stuff, right? You'd have to include that stuff. But I think it would be interesting. Like it's just interesting for me... Where it's like, okay, what do I like and why did that work? Yeah. And what do I not like? Because it'd be interest because the great thing about this is what do I not like? And then you see that and why don't I like this? And then how can I make that better in my game? Those elements. Right. What would I like to see added to these things? It would things? be a good exercise because can you make it can you make something you don't like better without simply converting it to yeah. something you like? Right. Exactly. Yeah, That'd be a really good. tough thing to do. Yeah. That'd be a good exercise. Yeah, thing. I think it'd be interesting. I would love exercise. to see how like my my likes and dislikes stack up to yours. I think in, in right, some exactly. respects we're very similar. Yeah. But in terms of ranking things and, and whatnot, because I mean you said you liked Spike the best, right? And he's yes. my least favorite character yeah. in, in Bebop. Not that I think he's a bad character. No. I think that he is like if we if you know when we make our, our game, I'm sure we'll have a Spike character in yeah. there, if not the main character, right? So yeah, and it's really interesting. I see like what I'm learning when I start making these lists and things. And and that's kind of what inspired me to do this. Cause I do like making lists and stuff. Um, and it's kind of surprising sometimes when I take a little step back and kind of look at it overall, I'm very like simple minded, like yeah. eight year old boy. Like, yeah, the main character is the best. 
duh. That's, I mean, like, that's, he's what, the coolest. that's what we're bred to to Exactly, because right? you like the more subtle, the more out there kind of things. Nate's kind of the same way, actually, mm-hmm. where he, he likes that kind of kind of stuff better as well. So I think it'd be really interesting um, to be able to do that. You know, you, what I've seen done, and this would be more feasible, are these things called like three by threes or something like that. And you take like a category. So if you were to do like gameplay or something, you'd have, yep. you know, you know what the three by yeah, three is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, you'd have like nine games on there and then you can compare them with your mates and see that'd be, that'd be an easier way to, to go about something like that. Yeah. Once you, once you do, um, like you pull themes, you pull character traits, you, you pull all that stuff. Um, there's near infinite number of ways to like categorize them or compare and contrast them yeah. or, you know, say stuff like, okay, well, I think this thing is the most important. And the, the main thing there, and this is, and again, we do this all through like Miro or, or just with post-its or, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. The, the main thing is you can never have two things in the same plane. So if you say that you think that, you know, uh, being, I'm making this up, but like brave and brawny, you know, just like, like the, the best fighter ever, that's the best character trait for a main character. Yeah. You could put that up top and then you could say like, okay, having a, a good heart would be like second or third. Right. Like, you have to rank things. Yeah. Things have to have a rank. But the beauty right. is taking taking your rankings and then putting my rankings on there, and then we're gonna have to come to a middle ground, right? right? So like you can't, in those situations, do you average it out I mathematically? Don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think I, so. I think you have to compromise. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it's you know for we we talk it through. We make our cases for different characters, and we we make concessions. Like I I think when you explain um, certain things, that's going to color the the you know personality of the character as we're as we're crafting these guys and and what i'm worried about a little bit i guess with you is i'm worried that you're going to be really adamant about something but i hope that you back it up like if i don't like something so one thing and i don't like to make waves right like right. that's that's just that's my what personality that's what i'm saying absolutely i think you will find very and this is the thing that i'm trying to keep in check and i'm worried about is when it comes to creating something okay uh i am very strong world okay so <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm excited you know that, I mean? like, yeah. that's the thing is is i if if i have something in my mind creatively that i think is is a good idea mm-hmm. i don't think you have to worry about that yeah okay good yeah. that because like i said you're very easygoing but i also but that's the thing is if well on the flip side of that will you if you don't really don't like something i come up with yeah you'll strike it down because it's creative like that's okay. the thing is like if, if we're very if we're, excited though, but we can, it's not so much striking something down. It's riffing off of you. And that's right, the thing right. I think we do well is we just continuously mold it. It's, yeah. it's like Play-Doh, man. And we're just working with it. Yeah. Play-Doh. Is that <laughs> not, not clay, clay or anything okay. or, or <laughs> Play-Doh is like that, right? No. I mean, it is, but maybe like, sure. We're just kidding. We're just Play-Doh. I don't know. Yeah, we're toddlers, yeah, man. Sure. I mean, <laughs> I tell I, you. Hey, we're toddler game developers. That's, tell you that. That's that, that an apt uh, metaphor, actually. See, I, I was I a little bit that. bigger brain than yep. you were thinking there. I, so. And I concede that. <laughs> because I want to, not because that's just in my nature. Yeah. I cool. think our main character should concede everything to the power. <laughs> it's just the matter you one. just make yourself as the, the main character. villain's like, turn yourself in. All right. I think you might be the worst <laughs> character <laughs> ever. You just be like, well, what do you guys want to do? I think that's going to be the biggest point of contention is how do we handle the main character? Because like you said, like you have a very uh, strong belief of what a main character should be. And well, that's it, why I that want you to trope. watch anime. Yeah. That's why I want to watch startup. That's why I want to watch all like, I want to get as much exposure. I want to see all these main characters. And that's why I like talking. I know you weren't super maybe on the same page or into it as I was, but that's why I like talking about, well, who are your favorite main characters? Yeah. You named Jack Sparrow. Mm-hmm. I love character analysis. I love going through like, why do we like Jack Sparrow? You know, and we, we did talk about this, you know what I mean? Like you root for him and things like that. He's a goofball. Sure. So it's like, it's things like that. And I think the more we're exposed to, the more we'll be able to develop our main character uh, and other things in the game. And and that goes back to, you know, just to tie it all together, why I wanted to do this little mini project of uh, cataloging these things because it's going to quickly tell you what traits you like, like I said, and you can start funneling that into what we're we're trying to make. And it, it quickly tells you like what works. 
Mm -hmm. Because everything on that list, theoretically, most of it should be good. You know what I mean? So if you're looking at the main characters on your list of favorite movies, you know, why are these main characters really popular? Things like that. So right. I think that'll be interesting to start to get into. Like, what characteristics do they have? And there's a lot of variability there, too. Yeah, and, and like I said, w when you have two people with their perspective of that right. stuff. I think we should both do it then. Yeah. Because that would be a really would, interesting overlap sure. to see. Because you're going to see immediately my favorite main characters all are kind of complicated. They're not just, oh, I'm the, I'm the good guy. I'm, I'm the best, you know? Yeah. I, I think complexity is, it, you need that in every character. It's just yeah. a matter of how much of that shows through. Like, you know, if it's just a random NPC in a town, how much, like, See, they have it. Like, you yeah. know they have complexity. Yeah. Do you need to make good on every single person's complexity? Probably not. I don't know. I think there's something to be said about a very simple character. Yeah. Like, I do it in D&D &D a lot when I DM. Just have an NPC that's just really straightforward. There's just not a lot going on to him. He has some sort of quirk. Like, he's a, like in, in uh, this one game I was doing once, like they had a cobalt in their party and that's like crazy because usually they're the bad guy, right? So right, yeah. That was like his one thing. He wasn't like a crazy character. He didn't have this elaborate backstory. He was just do like, do you think we can actually do that though? Like I, I have yet to sit down with you and talk about a character that doesn't go crazy with backstory or relationships or things like right. that. Like that's going to be, that'll See, be interesting it, it's kind of interesting. I don't know because I know you're very, you want to be different. You want to, but I would love to just have an orc fighter who's real good, who just wants to get paid. Sure. Who just wants to find the strongest opponent. That's done a million times. Mm -hmm. But that, some people love that guy. Right. Like, but oh I, man, I, look how fucking strong this guy is. But dude. I think He's that's awesome. the thing is you can have him, but then you can still have that extra layer. That yeah. Maybe, that but maybe do you, the, do you have to have him have kids? Do you have to have him fighting for a noble cause or can he just be a greedy he just fuck? Can, he can be a... <laughs> He can be greedy. Like that's that's fine. I think that when we're talking through these things, I think he'll have something. Whether that makes it into the game or not, sure. Who knows? Well, well yeah, but, because every person's complex. So right. sure, he's gonna have something. Like maybe he went through a lot of trauma, and that's why he only because he can only trust money or something. I don't know. Sure. But the interesting thing with that is like you have to pay him every so often, or else he leaves your party. <laughs> right. How sweet would that be? But that'd be awesome. Yeah, like, we could do something like. But that. that's his trope, and he's just really strong and. Yeah. He doesn't say a lot. He loves money. And yeah. maybe he loves, like, this is what I always do. I, I have him have, like, one thing. He loves money, but the only other thing he loves just as much as money, chicken legs. Fucking loves chicken legs, man. <laughs> like He would, he would uh, abandon a job to get some chicken legs? Yeah. Okay. Like, maybe you get, like, a certain quality of chicken leg, and you can get him to do something if you don't have the money or something. You know what I mean? It's like, there's <laughs> stuff little things. Stuff he normally wouldn't like, do, like... Hey, we're going to storm this castle. Like, it's oh, like, it's a suicide. Yeah. I will give you a bucket of chicken legs if you do From this. Chef Quiznot Quiz from not. the town of Twilight. But those are the best chicken legs in all the land. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're storming the uh, castle with us. <laughs> he just like charges <laughs> like, automatically. Like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Just the one stupid thing. But see, even that is like... I just like the silly things like that. That's, yeah. that's my kind of sense of humor mm -hmm. or like quirkiness. And where that's where I think we're, we're pretty similar. Um, I think that it'll be interesting to see how we balance that. Yeah. Right. Like, and, w and we're going to have a lot of consultants. So I think that'll help. Yeah. Like For I sure. think Josh, um, who we talked about him previously on the podcast, who he's a writer. Mm -hmm. This is way more up his alley where yeah. in D and D you, you have to worry about what the party's doing. This is pretty much just writing, you know, um, the to a certain doing extent. What, yeah, the party's doing whatever you make what, what you do. want them to yeah, do to a certain sure. extent. So you fence them in. Yep. So yeah, I think he'd be invaluable in something like that. But it's really exciting. Speaking of excitement, we have Grandia 2. Grandia 2. Tonight. 8 o'clock. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Catch the VOD on our Twitch. My Twitch? Uh, your Twitch. So it's going to be John, J O N X P 1290 at Twitch, check out my channel. Uh, the VOD's going to be there. We're going to try to hopefully get that up <laughs> and running it, yeah, I mean, tonight. I'm sure it'll I'm be sure fine. It'll be fine. Uh, so we'll get it on there. Stay tuned. We're talking about YouTube stuff as well. Um, and that'll probably be Couch Company, so stay tuned on that. But yeah, we're going to be doing that tonight. I'm very excited. I cannot wait to 
it's going to be awesome. Final Fantasy was so much fun. The format we did with that, I think this is going to be just as much fun, if not more. And this one's going to be recorded too. I think we're going to get a lot of good moments. Out I of can't this. wait to see how far you get in the in the first uh, playthrough of this. How far I get before I just just the quit? Well, I mean, like, oh <laughs> man, I hope not. But maybe. I mean, hey, like, no, no, no one, no, no one's going to force you to do it. But I have to do it, dude. You did Final Fantasy VII, so I have to do this. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII is one of the greatest games of all time, right? Not as good as Grandia 2, according to IGN. Uh, IGN, that's that's by true, several so I'm, places. <laughs> I'm very. Excited. I will say, I yeah, no, wait. I am too. So, if anyone's listening, check that out. I think you would enjoy that format. We found it to be pretty fun uh, last time when we did it with Final Fantasy. With that being said, I think I'm good. I'm good as well. I covered. I think we covered every, everything, everything from the universe to I am going to be interesting. Everything. I talk to Tyler about this all the time. His write ups are excellent. I'm going <laughs> to be gonna, interested to see. Yeah, yeah, a lot sure. to work with this time, buddy. Well, we appreciate anyone who is still here uh, listening. Uh, if you made it this far, which I doubt anyone did, put chicken legs in the comment comment section. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. How that'd amazing awesome. would that be? Yeah, chicken be, legs. That'd be pretty good. Gerard, yeah. Um, <clears throat> thanks for listening. You can catch us on anchor.fm slash couch company. We're on most uh, podcast platforms. You can Spotify. Call in too. Technically, there's a link in the description too. On uh, Anchor? Yeah. Any, well, on, on anything. Oh, so okay. in the description, there will yeah, always Apple, be a link. Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, all the big platforms. Yeah. Give us a call. I think you can leave a voicemail. Yep. That'd be hilarious. Play it on air. Troll us. Yeah. Whatever. Absolutely. Ask us anything. Ask us anything. Thanks for tuning in, joining us on the couch, and we will see you next time. See ya.